What's up, everybody? Back again for another night of beer drinking and talking about all kinds of yeah, stuff. Yeah, baby. <laughs> so I am the host of this beer licious ship, uh, Captain Rajay, along with my co-pilots. We've got... Uh, We're going to crash, man. <laughs> <laughs> we got Big T, Tom the Beer Whisperer. And we got Big J, Louisiana Beer Reviews here. You guys want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Well, I'm Tom the Beer Whisperer. Uh, Y'all know my channel on YouTube. I'm, I'm easy to find. It's just Beer Whisperer. I do have a website. It's TomTheBeerWhisperer.com. Today, I've got what I just found, though. It's from Piney River Brewing. You all heard me talk about them before. It's a access Ozark Slogger, uh, 5%, 12 IBUs, just an easy drinking lager. And hey, what about you, Jay? Well, I, you know, a lot of people know I have a channel. Well, my, the channel is just my name, but I mean, I call it Louisiana Beer Reviews when I'm doing beer. But, um, and I'm drinking wine tonight. <laughs> wine went on oh, Thursday. It's not like wine Wednesday. What be wine? Yeah. Go. Get your days right. What are you drinking? Get on a beer group drinking wine. What? The <laughs> so the guy that walks. What kind of shit is that? The guy that walks in the steakhouse and orders fish. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Bro. The guy's already good. Oh well, my father goes to um, Baskin Robbins. He orders vanilla ice cream. Um. <laughs> so what are you drinking? Nothing wrong with that. Vanilla is a classic. Are you drinking a cab or are you drinking? Uh, it's like it was a red one there you got there. Red, it's dry. Red just drinking wine. Ripple. No, they don't make that anymore. Red um, Sanford, Fred Sanford Ripple. Drinking Ripple. Ripple Red was Sanford just. And son. Red was always drinking Ripple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that was introduced or tonight. They still make Thunderbird? Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I think Ripple was Wino introduced. I think Ripple was introduced in 1968, and it was discontinued in 1984. Now, this is a wine that was introduced in 1977 and still made, and I got a big old three-liter jug for a good price, and it's made in uh, New York. It's called Taylor uh, Country Cellars Red. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> house wine. Yeah. 12% alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Say, now I got the theme from uh, Sanford. Uh, do, 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 do. Put on your house shoes. <laughs> it's a big one, Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah, he's washed. Ripple wasn't um, a real wine because one of those like flavored wines. Yeah. It was a fortified wine, is what it was. Yeah. And it had. Colors added to it, like coloring and stuff. This is just. I tried. So is Thunderbird. Thunderbird is flavored with some kind of weird. It's like a, it's like a citrus. Tom's getting slow stuck in his head now. <laughs> Actually, that show was based on a British comedy called Steptoe and Son. Just like a lot of American shows, it was copied from a British show. Well, that can happen, but let's not make the UK heads guys head big. So yeah, we copy some of their stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now they're cocky enough, man. Those bastards. We don't need to give Peter and Craig and all them any more ideas <laughs> about how we steal stuff. From them. They all we do the everything better over here. <laughs> Craig says hi. By the way, he actually can't get on because he's taking care of the little one tonight. Craig, all um, the family. Wait, well, uh, hey, Craig, hang in there, buddy. <laughs> Albino says he's lying in bed, much like James, but naked, waiting for my wife, hopefully not like James. <laughs> 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 you got to love Albino's commentaries. <laughs> uh, so tonight, we're kind of a little bit lower than the cast than we usually have, but who knows, people seem to tend to pop in during the course of the event. We're a small but lively group. Small but lively. And... Instead of doing like the question type stuff, every everything the last few days has really been around this whole wicked weed type thing and all this hating taking place out there in the beer world and people saying, well, they're not going to work with wicked weed and they're not going to drink wicked weed and all this stuff. And I've also seen parts of it being kind of uh, hypocrisy taking place because some of these same people that are bitching about wicked weed are some of the same people that line up 
to get Bourbon County Stout, that also go out and get Ballast Point, also go out and get um, yeah. uh, Founders, go out and get Goose Island, go out and get all these other ones that are also not technically craft breweries. So I just thought we'd have a little session about some of the Wicked Weed stuff and then some of the bitching taking place. And, you know, where it should be. I mean, you know, a company, God forbid them, they actually do well and they take an offer to grow to be bigger and then they get hated by the community to which they actually service. So, you know, some of the fallout from Wicked Weed, 44 breweries now say they're not participating in Wicked Weed's annual folk, uh, Folkatorium in Asheville on July 8th. Breweries are refusing to carry them, such as like Jester King. Uh, collabs are being dropped with some of the brewers, with them from some of the brewers for uh, present and future projects. All this hate is going basically their way now. Um, but then again, you know, what is their obligation as a craft brewery? Is it bad for them to want to be bigger? Uh, think about the community they're servicing. So if they do become bigger, the jobs that are coming to that community, the things that are going to be there developed, some of the other things taking place, it's kind of like, how much do you want to put on their shoulders? And so some of the hate out there, maybe is somewhat justified, but then again, some of it is just hypocritical in my opinion. I don't know if you can describe it all as hate. I mean, just, just because another brewery decides I don't want to be a part of that, I don't know if you can categorize that as hate. Mm -hmm. Then again, I'm, I'm not necessarily faulting Wicked Weed for taking a big payday. I mean, I mean apparently that's what America is all about these days their people for wanting to stay a craft brewery either if you only want to be associated with other small craft breweries i don't think you can fault them i don't think you can call it call it hate for them wanting to take for wanting to participate okay what are you thinking jay well um first of all i never had a wicked weed beer because i've never seen them in louisiana all right mm -hmm. so, whether it's good or bad i don't know uh i had a uh, I never had I've never had until they got bought out. Right. Like people say like Goose Island, Goose Island and um I never had um oh, what's another one? What's another one of those buyouts? Elysian. Did you get founders before they were bought out? Yeah, we used to no. get founders. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we never got founders. We never got Elysian. We okay. never got Goose Island. We never got um uh, uh, there must be others. Oh yeah, I got, I got a list of some. I wasn't going to go through it yet, but Listen. yeah, Listen. you've had things like Magic Hat, you've had uh, Red Hook, you've had Kona, Blue Point, Devil's Backbone, Breckenridge, Golden Road, Elysian, Lagunitas, Terrapin, Whitmer, Ten Barrel, um, just to name a few of those. Lining Kugel, for instance. So there's a ton yeah, out there, never, never and I see people that say they're these super craft brewers, and I can catch them. I guarantee at certain points with one of those beers in their hand. <laughs> well, you know, I've made it clear that I don't necessarily boycott anything, but I don't seek them out either. I mean, yeah, I, I was able to get Ballast Point or before they were bought out, so I, I don't know if there's a, a change in the product. But then again, once I've had them once, I'm not, I'm not actively seeking them out. Right. Uh, recently, uh, over Easter, I picked up a 12 pack of Line and Kugels. This is the first 12 pack from them I'd had in a while. So I, you know, I'm not one of those that say I, I, I boycott these products, but uh, I, I am clear that I mostly like to support local craft breweries. Right. Uh, and I think you're right, though. There is a lot of hypocrisy. I've seen folks that go on a, a, a rampage about the whole AB InBev thing, but these are the same guys who stand in line for four hours to brag about their, their Bourbon County staff. Right. And like Al Biden. But, you know, I mean, take whatever stand you want. Just don't be a, you know, don't be a hypocrite about it. Right, right. Like Albino says, you know, he's never had any wicked weed, so maybe now he can get some, which is a valid point. Um, how about the fact that AB and Bev, which now owns Saab Miller's hop farm, is in South Africa making it so that independent brewers can no longer buy the hops, and concurrently the hypocrisy of the independent brewers being angry about that while they're telling people not to buy anything owned by the big guys. Business-wise, it makes sense for the small guys to pull out, much like it makes sense for the beer store to pull out of it. See, that, that's great. I, I wanted yeah. to come across that topic, too, because that just came out this week as well. Um, yeah. I, I've talked to a lot of uh, uh, small craft breweries that, that are just not going to use those South African hops. They're going to find something else to use. They're going to do something different. But, 
Uh-huh. Yeah, there is a little bit of hypocrisy. If you don't want us to buy their products, then you shouldn't buy their stuff either. Right. And keep in mind, there is that also belief out there, which there could be a good amount of truth to it, that for people that like to go just the craft beer route, that the ultimate plan of A, B, and Bev, like a dark empire, is trying to basically do the craft beer, to do it in as far as causing some type of a destruction of it, possibly. You know, if they were to control everything and they were pulling all the levers, that's less offerings that some people can actually get because they can say, hey, we don't want to run these lines anymore. We bought you out. You guys are out of a job at some point. So, well, that's typically what happens. I mean, I don't, I don't think that's, I mean, I don't think that's far fetched. I mean, that is typically what has happened when they mm-hmm. bought out. Uh, there, there are some that have remained intact. Uh, there are some that like to argue the products the same. But uh, in, in the case that when, when I have had breweries, when I've had beers uh, from breweries that before they were bought out, after a period of time, the beers are not the same. Mm-hmm. Typically, creativity changes, uh, you know, uh, uh, product changes, things happen. I mean, uh, Budweiser, AB InBev only buys certain certain types of, of barley. They only use certain yeast strains. So typically what they want you to do then is use use a yeast strain that they have in place of what you're using. That will change your product a little bit. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, if they force you to take different ingredients, that's going to affect it. Although on a lot of the companies from what's being said so far, they're leaving some alone. But, you know, if you can start to pick up some type of things, you'll definitely start to notice it. If you're a person that drinks that beer enough, you know, you'll sit there and you'll know you could you could pick up a Budweiser or a Pabst or a Miller and know that taste of it. And it's got that distinct type flavor to it. Right. So um, just like you can pick up if you drink enough, you know, ballast point something, or if you drink enough, um, even one of the other craft type brands, you'll know what it's supposed to taste like. And you start to f- taste those little differences when things happen. So right now, the but it's sand- typically just kind of a gradual dumbing down. I mean, you taste it today. It's the same, but it, it, it just, it, it's not like they change everything overnight. I mean, the same has happened with the macro brands that they you know, Budweiser, uh, PBR, uh, all the offshoots. I mean, uh, PBR 30 years ago doesn't taste like PBR now. Right. I mean, it uses more coins. It's the same to me. <laughs> Gradual dumbing down of palace where people have accepted that as quality where it, where it is not. I mean, these are bad beers using cheap ingredients to, to just get people drunk. Well, maybe it's like the candy bar effect, right? You gradually shrink the candy bar, but you keep raising yep. the price on it. You don't realize after a certain point. Yeah. You're actually paying I mean, more than you're Gradual getting. dumbing down of palace. My experience with the buyouts has been largely positive, but I don't. I'm not surprised you said that. I'm really not. <laughs> we'll go ahead, Jay, Tom. <laughs> Let Jay oh, speak God, his piece. Cheer for Goliath as he stops. Let Jay, Jay speak his piece. Here we go. Go ahead, Jay. No, you could talk over me the whole time if you want. That's not a surprise, but um out of this group though but um if you got something you want to say to me say it don't be a candy ass about it say it well i'm trying to i i usually just buy stuff like um you know i just go to the store and whatever i see i buy it you know right something grabs your attention like a label or a design or something like that i'm not on the hunt like oh let me see let me see uh these are macro these are crafty these are true craft. Let me make a hierarchy, a hierarchy of needs. I, um, it's based on this uh, great quest that I'm on. No, I just go in whatever I see that is, if the price is right, and I, I've never had it before, I'll say, oh, that might be good. Now I'll go research and I'll say, uh, oh, I didn't know they got bought out by Miller. Or, and then I'll drink it, and if it's excellent, I'll give it an A, and if it's good, I'll give it a B, and if it's fair, I'll give it a C, and if it's bad, I'll give it a D, and if it's a, you know, typical type thing. Yeah. Uh, that's just my approach. I'm not out there on a great search, unless I want to collect the bottle or came from my bottle collection. So I'm saying, uh, I don't think I'm being, I don't know what you meant, I candy ass about it. I'm just saying that's the way I feel about when I buy it. That's my buying method. It's always been my buying method. It's just something I do. 
I mentioned the candy ass because you made a remark about uh, I can't kick you out of this group. That was kind of a candy ass. If you got something direct you want to say to me, say it. But the way you just did that was rather candy ass. No, I mean, can you kick me out of this group? I don't think you can. <laughs> no one's getting kicked out of anything. <laughs> you made the mark. I can't kick you out of this group. You're trying to say something to me, so say it. Well, Jay got kicked out of another group, I think, and that's just the point he was just expressing there. Yeah, last night. But, you know, no big deal. But you know, Again, again say, say exactly what you mean. Don't t tell me. If you guys said you want to say to me directly, say it. I just said, I said, you can't kick me out of this group. <laughs> okay, there you go. Never mind. Anyway, I'll just say you, know, you don't have the balls to say it, but that's okay. Albino, I buy, <laughs> Albino, Albino says uh, the Canadian Beard Awards when the CBA kicked out Molson on a bat. Uh, Craig on Kemp Review says AB and Bev will never stop craft beer. New breweries will just start up. Albino said, exactly, sir. Here in Ontario, the biggest change is going from a canister or plated DE filter to multi million dollar absolute zero filter. Which makes the beer taste more subdued, but adds a much more better shelf life. Yeah. So that's some of the stuff you can see, like where a conglomerate may add stuff into it. But the funny thing I read, one of the pieces about Wicked Weed is one of the things later on this year, they were supposed to be a part of something, but they didn't want to recognize it now because of the buyout. But they told them they could still participate. They just couldn't win an award. And again, so that's hypocrisy in the craft beer world in itself. Like, yeah, you come party with us, but you just can't take anything home. Well, in, in, in defense, in defense of those that want to buy whatever beer is out there, I mean, it is really getting hard to tell who owns who at this. Point. Exactly. So, at a point, when do you start saying, you know, let's just stop the hate, just like drink the beer if it's a good beer, not even worry about it. Uh, you can't just drink beer. Yeah. It's a great. It's. You don't, you don't, you don't understand it if you're just drinking it. It's, it's bigger than that, Rod. It's bigger than that. <laughs> well, you know that is kind of a problem, though. Do you want to support a company that does bad things? I mean, AB InBev hasn't exactly been, you know, a paragon of a company. Right. I mean, like I don't shop at Walmart because I don't like the Walmart philosophy on things. Yeah, it's kind of the it's same, kind of thing. same I mean, thing. With the they, beer thing, I try to drink more craft beer because I want to support more of the local breweries. <laughs> If, if they treated people well, I, I don't think it'd be an issue, but I think that is a lot of it. And so for those that say, well, why does it matter? Well, that's why it matters. Yeah. That's why it's important. Um, and I think when you're looking at the small breweries, especially when you have breweries like, you know, Tom, you represent where you sell for one, but here in Cincinnati where we have like 40, the beer quality is just that much better than some of the macro because it's the same thing is if you were going to a top steakhouse versus if you're going to a McDonald's, who's going to give you the better burger? Yep. <laughs> yeah, and, and I've made that comparison over and over again in several videos. Yeah, I've, I've said almost the same thing. Yeah. There is a difference. Look, I can understand if you want to avoid a company because they do stuff that's bad. I'm not talking about that. I mean – I'm not going to go eat a Comet ping pong, but, um, and I <laughs> don't buy, I don't buy certain ice cream, you know, but I'm talking about in general, just drinking, you know, yeah, it's good. I'll still say, like I said this before, if Joseph Stalin made a beer, don't you know all the terrible things he did? Stand up, but it does taste good. The beer is very well made, even though he did murder, you know, Paul Pot, if they said, well, beer. So you were going to give up your soul for a beer? No, I'm just <laughs> Yeah, I know. Really, no, I, I will still buy certain of their products, but no, I'm, I'm not doing so I mean, if, if David Duke made a beer, I'm not Trump drinking it. I'm not buying Trump beer, no. I don't care how no, good David not. Duke's beer is. I'm not going to drink it. David Duke? Evil, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't talked to David Duke. But no, I would say... Um, <laughs> 18 years. No, but I would say, in the point, let's say some evil dictator. Stalin beer be bloody Russian red or that'd, that'd be a marketing red. Some, some Stalin something. It might be like, uh, it might be like, uh, it might be like uh, Baltica beers. But no, what I'm saying. A Hitler is, beer would be there's nothing kosher about this product, right? <laughs> right. I would never say. This Not beer. Kosher here. Would you drink a Hitler beer? 
I would try it. <laughs> I wouldn't. See, oh, Lord have mercy. If you're killing me, dude. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, well, I drank, I drank the Imperial Stout from Rogue with the little hammer and sickles on it. It was so cute. But anyway, um, but it was an awesome beer, you know. But um, I would say, okay, I, I hate the... <laughs> But that was the design. That's like, a little bit different. <laughs> wow. Okay, let's say, let's say they had a. Uh, no, I mean, I I have a good sense of humor, and I'm laid back about these kind of things, and I don't get uptight about it. Like, let's look at this for example. Okay, like the rogue had the Russian imperial stout with the hammer and sickle on it. Oh well, you know, I can nitpick and say, all right, forty million people died under communism. I'm not gonna drink the beer. I'm so offended. Oh, I'm so hurt. I didn't care really. I just. Made a comment. It was kind of comical, you know. But uh, standing. <laughs> oh damn! That doesn't even make sense. It was an A plus beer. I mean, it was dynamite. So let's say that some edgy company, you know, they want to be edgy. They said, "Oh, we're gonna make a, a Hitler series," and they had like a a black beer that would be a like a um, Heinrich Himmler SS black beer, uh, an F, a black beer. Now you would be offended because it would have all these swastikas on and everything. So you would say that's terrible. You know, I shouldn't. No, I'd be. Offended I'm not going to be supporting the cause that killed a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, see, there it is. I, I, mean, that was that simple. I could have, a, I could have a neighbor having a, a flag of the swastika. It wouldn't bother me, but I'm not going to buy something where it supports it. No, I understand <laughs> that. So I would say, look. I don't... <laughs> Listen, to what I'm trying to say, children. Um. I would say, look, Rod, I would say, look, okay, uh -huh. this is terrible. It's an evil beer. I mean, it's not a beer. The beer can't be evil. It's a neutral product. That's a neutral object, right? It's a uh, um, product. So I'd say, oh, the company's evil. You know, they have swastikas. They uh, they have this, uh, um, let me think of something outrageous. Uh, um, detention camp red lager or something like that, you know. Uh, so I say, oh, that's offensive, you know. But if the lager was good, if the red lager was good, I would say as offensive as this beer is, I mean, who would come up with a term like this detention camp lager, relocation camp lager? This is terrible. I'm offended. But the lager itself is good. I mean, this is an exceptional red I'm lager. laughing because I'm thinking you're trying to pitch a detention lager. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you can pitch something like that because I don't think there's a – a way around trying to pitch it into a good type of story on the beer. <laughs> I mean, it'd be stupid. I don't even support those types of things, you know, those types of uh, marketing strategies. Right. But I'm saying if the beer tasted good, you would have to oh. get a high score, you know. Yeah. I mean, Ben and Jerry's, from what I understand, they make very good ice cream. And I think I've tried it before. You know, Pretty good ice cream. But the, Pretty good. The, 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 what I'm trying to say is the actual product whether it's ice cream or pizza from Washington, D.C., or uh, or some kind of outrageous beer like I was just talking about hypothetically, which doesn't exist. But apparently they do have these Hitler beers in Italy. I don't know where these people got this idea. But uh, the, the beer itself is a neutral object. So you would, rate, you would rate the beer on the quality of the beer, right? So you say the beer itself is good, even though the company might be horribly evil you know you you can understand that concept <laughs> i'm not sure why you'd support something you know is horribly evil though i guess that's the part i'm struggling with you're not if supporting I, it you're just really evil i'm not supporting their businesses you know uh you know no if, you wouldn't typically buy the product. no you're talking about because you're talking about anheuser bush there's companies that are racist or there's companies doing this bad or that bad i'm not going to support them I don't care how good their goods and services are, I'm not supporting them. Right, that, that goes to my Walmart thing. I'm, I'm talking about you just sample the product. You're not out there buying cases of it. You're just saying, okay, I tried this. Um, <laughs> child trafficking beer line, and um, these people are objectively evil. Yeah, but aren't you still part of the problem, even if you're just trying the product? Aren't you still part of the problem? That's the hard thing about beer reviewing. It's a tough job. You got to go out there and you got to review all the stuff that as bad as it is. Of course, you can skip over things and no one's going to think, no one's going to say, oh, I noticed you never. 
Because <laughs> you don't mention it. So if you don't mention it. That's a pretty good beer. I haven't had it, but it's a good beer from Against the Grain, I've heard. Yeah, so yeah, I have just, an issue with the artwork. Yeah, it's a, my, my OCD won't let me purchase it. Yeah. <laughs> you can dance around. You can and stuff, you know what I mean? So that's a way to get around it. But I'm just saying, I would still, I would, I would not say, oh, the company's evil. Like, let's say Anheuser Busch is evil. I mean, I don't believe that, but let's just say they are. I wouldn't say, well, they're evil, so I don't like the beer. I would say they're evil, but yet the beer is good, right? Now, some so you're willing to give up part of your soul to support it. No, I'm not supporting. I'm rating it. Well, you get you're supporting. You're it. Am I still supporting it? I'm not sure how you can make that distinction. <laughs> I mean, whether you're getting the beer for free or not, if if you know, if if you're you're pandering to get the free product, you know, you're still part of the problem. When you get it, then you're you're actively you're like looking to get free stuff. So that's a problem right there. You know, that's a different issue. Some reviewers well, you there. that you weren't paying for the beer; you're just sampling it. So. You had to get it for free. No, no, I mean, I would actually, no, no, I'm talking about I would say, buy it. Still, if you're trying it at all, you're still part of the problem. <laughs> Could make that argument. Um, but at least you, I just you're just trying. <laughs> <laughs> I just did make that argument. As a matter of fact. Is, is relocation. No, if the question at hand would be this. The question at hand. Is relocation camp. Red Lager. In Real you say, well, and I Red Lager. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> You're lighting up our board, by the way, so keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you say, oh, this this is maybe so Cindy watching this one. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at this one, Cindy. Cindy, I'm going to talk to you off air. I'll show you anyway, mine. You show me yours, Cindy. I don't know. Cindy might agree. Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> case <laughs> you know what i'm saying like uh I, I, when i saw that robe i was like oh these little but i drank it and it was good i mean i had did it i don't like that company i i think they're uh, they they never talked to me anyway after i made my what is that condoms right after that incident they never talked to me again so you know it's all right they got their feelings hurt oh that's too bad go to them they said, "Do I want to try this beer?" I said, "Yeah." They said they were going to send me a beer. They didn't say they were going. To, they didn't say they were going to send me other things. I should have put those on. I should have tried those on on video, but I probably wouldn't have a channel anymore. But you know, so I mean, <laughs> they wanted to. Be, they wanted to be edgy, so I said, "Let's go along and let's be really edgy. Let's go all out edgy." But I guess they they wanted to be what you call politically correct edgy. But I mean. <laughs> Hey, well, and I didn't even say anything ugly. I said their beer was most excellent, right? Watch the video. Yeah. I didn't, well, I didn't get offended about the condoms. I didn't get offended about the condoms. All I said was, I'm not going to use them. I'm going to save them in case two rogue executives might want to visit a New York bathhouse. That's all I said. I offered to let them use what they sent me. Now, that was kind hearted, I thought. Albino uh, had to get in. <laughs> he couldn't there take we it go. anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I was late. I was in my bed waiting for a blow job, and I had to stop and come here. <laughs> I was about to read your comments, but since you're here now. <laughs> it's Albino And I watch his videos all the time, as well as Tom the Bear Whisper and Roger. <laughs> I, I, I'm 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 sitting here listening, and I know I I've lost about thirty seconds because of the the time delay between YouTube and and the live stream. Right. But I'm right. sitting here listening to this, going, how how would we even contemplate saying that I'm going to? And I uh, well, first off, comparing anything like child trafficking or or Nazis or this and that with Budweiser, that that, and I know what what type of comparison you were trying to make, Jay, but that that, that just, just blew my mind right there. And then to say, you know, no, like, well, if, I, I would say it's a good beer, but it's deplorable. No, if, if you really think something's deplorable, you just don't give it any type of publicity at all. Right. That's, yep. That's what RJ and I were trying to say. You're right. You're right. But I'm a sucker for the hype. You know what I mean? So, like, when these companies do stuff, sometimes I buy it anyway. And then I'll, and I'll say, oh, you know, they shouldn't put the icon, like, they shouldn't put that symbol on there. And then I'll, make a little production about it, but I'll still drink it and give it a good rating. You know, I was just being absurd to make a point, you know, 
Oh, no, I, I understand I, that, but at the same time, it blew my mind. I had to get out of the bed, put my pants on, and I'm <laughs> like, uh, Well, hell, Elbido, I'm not even wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you only see me from, the, you know, from, from here up. <laughs> it's funny because people will regard Anheuser Bush as though they're on par with Emperor Palpatine and the, and the Empire and all that. I mean, it's just funny to me. Um, I'm not a. I'm not an advocate for I'm done. Oh, and before before I get off, Tom, you know what I was talking about. Tom, you know what I was talking about. You kicked me out that group. And you wanted to. Uh, me. Uh, why did you just say it directly rather than any window? You got something you want to say? Say it. Say it outright. Uh, I think I was going to pick up on Don't it. Be I'm candy ass about it. Say it outright. I was. Is it Todd was one of the ones that kicked you out? No, he was the one. It was, Not one of the ones. It's a group <laughs> on Facebook, <laughs> and, and I, I, I did not want Jay in the group because of what he brings to the table. I did not want the group's integrity watered down, but by what he did. So yeah, oh, that's, oh, that is ridiculous. It's my group. That is ridiculous. <laughs> and that, that is ridiculous. And those administrators were appalled. All I all I did was do what? Talk about whiskey. And that was the purpose of the group to talk about whiskey. That is so ridiculous. Well, you did it. I got invited. You did it. You should call it drinking whiskey, unless I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want somebody of your character in a group I'm involved with. So I'll say that directly. Well, see, I don't be beat a, around the bush. I don't. I don't drop innuendo. If I've got something to say, I'll say it right to you. Let it be known that I do not kick anyone anyone out of my groups, unless they try to sell sunglasses. <laughs> well, there, there's three admins in the group. One of them let you in without talking to me. He didn't know my issues with you. The uh, the other third uh, admin agreed with me that you're not the right fit for the group. Oh yeah, right. I'd like to know who that was. But it, but it doesn't matter. It's my group. I have the right to let you in or not, and I don't like what you bring to the group. You're right. You, you, what you're, talking you're, about? I, I, I don't. I don't like your character. I don't like your integrity. I mean, you, you don't have any integrity. You lack character. I don't want you in my group. No, that's not true. I just was talking about whiskey and praising people's whiskey. Now. I don't see where that's a bad thing to do. Drinking whiskey. Let's drink whiskey. Okay. I'll post some whiskey videos. Oh, that's bad. Oh, I'd like to try that whiskey one day. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Oh, that's bad. He's got to be out. He's talking about whiskey. You probably got in well, trouble. Well, that's not what I'm whiskey. referring to, Jay, and, and you're well aware of what I'm referring to. But if that's the way you like to spin it so folks will feel sorry for you, by all means, you do it. I don't know what you're talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. See, this is what I'm talking about. You have no character. You will not admit things that you know. Yeah, I mean, you know exactly well, I'm here. why I don't want you in that group yet. Yet you, you play these little games. So this is RJ's group. So we won't talk about that here. But you know exactly what I'm talking no, he, about. No, go ahead. Feel free. <laughs> Rajay's very uh, laid back. <laughs> he's not uptight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering how mine got quiet or whatever he's getting at. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's trying a condom. Don't, don't be a candy ass. Well, I'm telling you like it is. So there you go. There's your chance, buddy boy. Well, and talk, I told you. Talk, you, know, talk, talk, you, talk. you lack character. You lack integrity. And I don't want you in my group. I'm not sure that's how exactly, you're more plain than that. Now you, can you back up this bizarre contention? <laughs> I don't like some of the things that you've said and done over the years. Uh, I, I, <laughs> and I don't want you in a group that I'm involved with. It's, it's really that simple. I don't know why that's an issue for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how I can be more clear. I've told you, I've told you in private messages that why exactly what my issues are with you. So I know you know what they are. Uh, I don't want anything to do with you. I've made that I've made that abundantly clear over and over again, Jay. I don't know why I have to keep repeating it. Now let's uh, let's think about this for a minute. 
support that. And I think there's evidence to back this up. <laughs> Let's go and look at social media. And you do you do videos a lot, and I watch videos a lot all the time, watching videos. And if you notice the comments I make on the videos, they're always positive, and I'm always praising you. So I don't understand. I mean, I like to watch your videos. I make nice comments. I thought we we're supposed to, you know, treat each other nicely. Now, if you can show where I made ugly comments, please do. But I don't think that there's any record to that effect. All positive. Yeah, you know exactly what I'm referring to. You, you, you've done on various brown people rants on Facebook, and then you've gone back and cleaned it up and, and deleted it. It doesn't change the fact that I saw it in the first place. You know what you've done. You know what you said. You know what you do. I don't want anything to do with you. I don't know how I can make that that play that more plain. And the fact that you want to continue to lie about it uh, reinforces the fact that I know you have no character or integrity. I don't want anything to do with you. You gave I, me I don't have facts here. This is we're having a conversation. You know what you've done. You want to continue to lie about it, like our, our president with the bad hair. Go ahead, but it still doesn't mean that I don't have reasons to not want anything to do with you. I don't want anything to do with you. Just let it go. Oh, but people. You want, to, you want to join the group? You no, know I'm not going to want you in. Just so you can push at me. I don't want anything to do with you. I don't like you. You have no integrity. I personally think you're a racist. There's other things about you I don't like. I don't want anything to do with you. I don't know how I can make that more clear. Well, folks, let me let you, let me say this to the audience. <laughs> I, Here we go, I, folks. I admire Tom the Beer Whisperer's videos, and I often make positive comments to that effect. And I appreciate Tom giving me two nicknames back in 2012. And Mr. Information, and that meant a lot to me. And um, I, my intention is to continue to support you in positive regard and positive energy projection. But you know, I'm kind of a laid back person, and I think that's the way we need to handle it. So I'm in your fan club. <clears throat> I'm in the Beer Whispers fan club, people. <laughs> well, there you go. All right, well, let's get back to the beer here. Um, Actually, I have a question. My wife just posed a question to me. She mm -hmm. wants to know if anybody has ever had or made a honeysuckle beer. We have some honeysuckle growing in the backyard. She wants me to do a homebrew badge. So, made or tasted a honeysuckle beer or a beer made with honeysuckle. I haven't made a honeysuckle beer. That sounds interesting. Although when I had that bee beer from Flying Dog, it did kind of have that honeysuckle type taste with it. They used beer honey and pollen for that. Um, wow, that'd be interesting. I would like to I'm try. Just, I've, I've done some brewing in the past, but it's been a long time. I'd wonder if you use mostly if you'd use it mostly in the finish, more like an aroma hop. Yeah, well, you'd have to put it late in the boil so the flavor came through for sure. Yeah. yeah. I would probably put it in like the last ten minutes of the boil. More to the more to the aroma than the flavor, but I I don't, I, I don't I look, know enough about I, it. I, I to like the it. flavor. I mean, I mean, you could split it up and put some in for the aroma and do a late one like at ten or dry hop it. Yeah, dry hop might be interesting. Yeah, I, I put some in the late boil and then dry hop. I don't think I put it in early. Yeah, if it was me, oh, poorly actually said beer advocate shows about a dozen beers done with honeysuckle. Oh, there you, there you go. go. Okay, yeah. cool. And Albino hey. concurred. One time. You got some bad. Lots of seasons with honeysuckle. One time I uh, drank a beer that was made with, what was it, dandelion? It was called a uh, pistol. Not pistol like a gun. dandelion beers out there. Yeah, I've, I've had a dandelion beer. Not pistol like a gun, but a pistol like a flower. P-I-S-T-I-L. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Hey, look, uh, because of scheduling uh, situations, and uh, we you know what that is, Rod. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'll see you around. I appreciate it. Albino Rhino, I'm glad you jumped about the bed. 
and put pants, pants on a nigga. Hell, I'm not even wearing pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Albino Rhino is that when I watch, I, I don't get to watch a lot of his videos because he does so many Canadian beers that we cannot get. We cannot get those beers, so I can't make a comment about them. You still watch them? You, you, know, you, I, you I, still I, watch them? I still, still watch them. I watch a lot of Oh, Dusty Rhodes is in the house. Dusty Rhodes. There he is. Oh. No, I never watch it. I never watch it. I never I'm about to get off, but I never watch a video for a beer I haven't had because I can't relate to it, you know? But anyway. Oh well, well just, I'm glad. Doesn't I mean you have to leave. <laughs> yeah. Huh? I didn't hear you. <laughs> you just mute the video for a second. Get a tissue and come on back. Oh. No, I have to wait. <laughs> I'm sure me and Tom the Beer Whisperer will be like the Beatles. We're gonna work it out. Oh wait a minute, they they broke up. Never right. got back there. Todd's in the house on the on the comment. But no, honestly. Oh, oh Todd. God. Agreed. I should get kicked out. Hey, it's a real thing. <laughs> I know he wasn't the guy. Hey, but um, really, honestly, we'll get it back together. We'll get the band back together. All right. All right, man. Enjoy I was never in your band. <laughs> oh, I got those messages to back. But no, we were. Me and Tom used to be hanging out together all the time, talking and having a good time, and. Oh, here we go. You know what happened with Red Rooster and all that, and we got. Hey, Paul, what are you drinking, man? <laughs> um, Arcadia, Arcadia Ale's Imperial Stout, which is okay at best. Oh, okay at best. Yeah, yeah unfortunately. What's wrong with your voice? You been drinking already? Me? <laughs> your voice is a little more raspy, like you've been drinking for a little bit. I just woke up. Ooh. I was waiting for my girlfriend to call, and I passed out. And then, of course, when she did, my ringer was almost off, so I didn't hear it. So I was like, uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm in the shit house now. So I, I sent her a message. Gonna go get drunk. Uh, call me when you can. <laughs> <laughs> Your hotel room. <laughs> yep. I did some good drinking last night. I went to Coonan's. I went to Bee Nectar and uh, had some good beers from Michigan. Did you, right try, on. did you try the uh, serial killer yet that you got? Yeah, that's okay. It needs age. Yeah. The one I had was aged. It was pretty good. Mm, yeah, it sounds like – hey, to me, it seems like it's it'll do great if you just let it sit for about 10 years. You know what I mean? One of the, guys, yeah. one of the kind of deals. <laughs> did, I, did I walk into something uh, odd? <laughs> well, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you came in at just about the right freaking time. I'll tell you that. Right. You walked into the still cage match there. <laughs> Albino, had, Albino muted himself. He's gonna go. He's gonna go. Paul, he said. <laughs> well, I was hoping. You two are like oil and water, though. Well, it was like I was gonna stop, and then it's like I felt like you two wanted to get it off your chest, and I'm like, do I stop it right now? Let you guys finally get so it like, done. He, he does a little in the window, and outside. I, I kept, you know, if you got something you want to say, just get it out, man. Yeah. Too passive yeah, aggressive. In a way, it was almost like you know, why I don't want anything to do with him. In a way, you know, just not getting it. In a way, it was just like get it over, get it over, all in done. Because people always ask, people do ask me about what's going on with Tom and Jay or something. Like, just it's over, okay? So well, anybody, yeah, if anybody wants to find out, they can check out this video and they'll catch the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like him. <laughs> now it's clear why I don't like you. Because I, I like I like Trump. I'm a problem solver. So <laughs> there it is. Yeah. But uh, yeah, get along. Some of the comments were interesting, so <laughs> some of our some of our fans were getting a little nervous there. Didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I apologize someone, to the fans. When someone shut the fuck Let's up, stab yeah, no one. Paul wasn't there to yell at anybody or bring them up. I know. Huh? It's usually Paul and I. Well, it's all right. Yeah, poor Craig. I think he went back for a little bit. He couldn't take it. <laughs> See, I fall asleep when I miss stuff. Yeah. <laughs> In the basement said, this is freaking crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. Shut the fuck up. Anyway, we were talking earlier about, like, the Wicked Weed, some of the apocryphy taking place, some of the people complaining about it, some of the situations that were out there. Um, 
where you see people say, we're not going to drink this beer anymore, but yet you see them drinking other beers that are bought out. Because people don't really know who's been bought out half the time. So it's like kind of a fake air about themselves that some put out there. But there are some opportunities for like a wicked weed because now other people do get a chance to get that beer. I think, Paul, you brought up in one of your videos the other day about how it helped to build a community when you talked about one of the breweries there in PA. Um, I want to say, was it Latrobe you were talking about? Or I think you were out buying this video when you were doing it. Yeah, but you know, you know, you're not a big fan of them for what they did in the community. Is great, right? Mm -hmm. So there's that other side of it too. So I don't know if you have any take on it as well as you're still getting sleep out of your eye. I don't care. (laughs) 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 It was good. You're gonna drink it regardless, right? Yeah, I know. Uh, This, this, this is a, a beer. For example, this is the. Coonan's Raspberry Ice Bock, which I bought a bottle of, you know, huh. when I was drunk. And uh, I bought two bottles, actually. I bought one for me, and I bought one for the guy who took me there to say thank you. And they're $32 a bottle. And it's like, I just spent $32 on a beer. Like, is this okay with me? No. Is it good? It better fucking be. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of those kind of deals. I was like, is it worth the trip to Detroit to kill the Coonan's if the beer isn't that good? Yes, it's worth yeah. that. You know what I mean? So it's like uh, beer prices, you know, when you when you are in that elitist area, too, can be yeah. kind of insane. I don't know. It's like, where where do we find common ground, guys? Can we? Either I know Jordan that? bought that one for 60 a beer, he said that time. And the Samuel Adams Utopia is like, what, 80, 85 or something, depending where you get it at? Well, I've heard, I've heard that being in the 200s, depending, yeah. you know what I mean? Well, people get it. They sell them on the secondary markets. I know. I we had a guy here that found it one day at um, Jungle Gyms. I think it was eighty dollars or whatever. And he sold it like within a second or two on Amazon. It seemed he got it out within a day to some. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. yeah. And if they catch it, they take it down. But he ended up there quick enough that someone saw it and said, "Okay, I'll buy it for that amount." So, mm-hmm. All right, Dark Lord, uh, right there. Yeah. Yeah, Dark Horse is Dark Lord. That's I've heard that sells for crazy hundreds of dollars too. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, it just it's intense. Yeah. It's a- yeah, Craig was surprised that he said the viewing numbers went up. I said, yeah, like people like to watch drama. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of like an auto wreck. So you were kind of watching it. You didn't want to stare, but you kind of went. <laughs> I think some people were a little nervous. They were kind of like <laughs> make it stop, but not yet. <laughs> Oh yeah, like people were texting each other. Get on the channel quick! Get on the channel quick! They're fighting! They're fighting! <laughs> He's gonna get knocked out in the third round. Go! 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, poorly reviewed. He said, "I would expect the distribution to increase now." I got a listing in and Golden Road in Columbia after acquisition. I'm the same way. We get Golden Road and the listing in here now, and. You see people like talking about the space dust, how good it is, but nobody's talking about boycotting them. I'm like, if you're going to boycott for one, don't you have to boycott for all? No, they talked about a long time. Long time ago. Yeah, if you're going to boycott, you got to boycott. That's why I, was, I, I thought I'd boycott these, but it, you know, I've had the I've had the space dust once. I mean, it's thirteen dollars a six pack here. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to buy it. Yeah. You know, there 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 are, there are other great beers for less money, so and and I'm not going to buy that and support AB Invest. So, it's enough beer, but it's not outstanding in my opinion. I thought it was pretty good, but um, it's good. But there are others out there yeah. that aren't owned by AB InBev that are that are uh, of equal or better quality that I'm going to put my money in. But at least they gave you a six pack. Most of those beers are like a four pack for that amount. <laughs> yeah, four pack seems to be where a lot of them are. Doing well, you did get two other beers with Elysian at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's thirteen bucks a six pack. It really it shouldn't be thirteen a six pack. Yeah, but like Poorly said, he wouldn't seek anything out special, and I'm kind of the same way. You know, if it's there, I'm going to get it, but I'm not going to go hunt it down. Really, um, no, I'm not going to. And he said he wasn't overly enamored with Lysian, but he thought they were decent. So you know, it's yeah, all- that was my thought. Sir. Yeah, I thought we're, we're we're okay, but they didn't knock my socks off. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like the best IPA I've had. But I just thought it was a really pretty good IPA. It was good, but I don't know if it's thirteen to six pack good. I guess is the point I'm trying to make. I don't think it's thirteen to six pack good. 
Yeah, you look at that and you say, is it that much better than like the Voodoo Ranger that they came out with, um, like their 8 Pale Ale or their uh, 8 Hot Pale Ale or their uh, IPA? They're kind of, I mean, it's maybe slightly better, but I don't think it's from 13 versus 8.99 or 9 a six pack. You know, is it that much better? You know, to kind of put them in that kind of regard. But well, you know, from, from my neck of the woods, from my perspective, I've got. Uh... You know, I've got Mothers and White River. I mean, I can buy Gravel Bar IPA and the Mothers Little Helper IPA mm. for about eight or nine a six pack. That, that that's where I'm going to put my money. Yeah. But Albino, I don't know if Albino's back yet. I think he's messing with the kids or doing something. His mic was there. Paul disappeared for a second. <laughs> but um, any other thoughts you have on? The, these buyout <laughs> situations, or you know, I, I think the bottom line is people have to do what's right for them, and you know, I, I think there are some that like to say, "Well, if if you boycott AB InBev, but you go to Walmart, you're a hypocrite." Well, I don't think so. I think there's a difference. I think people can make choices in their lives. If that's where you can make the distinction, I'm only going to support small beer. Well, I think that's okay, but you may not have an option where you shop. Right. You know, if if Walmart or another chain is all you have for groceries, you know, then then you do what you have to do. But I, I think people have to do what's right for them. I don't like I said, I don't necessarily boycott those products, but I, I I'm not going to seek them out either. Right, right. Yeah, like my I thing. Think there's a difference between you know the folks that seem to want to champion Goliath over David for whatever reason. I think you have to push your motives when you hear people talk like. That. Yeah, and like I don't like I said, I, my whole thing with the like a Walmart type thing is I don't go because of the philosophy of what they do on stuff. I never fault anybody for going to them. It's just for me, I've made a personal choice not to actually do that. Yes, and that, that's it. It's a personal choice. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to go but you, to a but place. I, I do know some folks that are really products. adamant about uh, boycotting AB and Bib, but but they'll still buy Bourbon County Stout. Right, exactly. That's an issue. I don't. I don't. I think in that case, you can't have it both ways. And, the, gonna, and the same thing with the people. Buying said. something, you know, if you're going to jump on my case because I bought a six pack of Red Hook, you know, you, you, you know, you can't buy the BCBS and, and expect everything to be okay. No, I'm going to call you a hypocrite. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing that the like I said, the one festival they said, well, we'll still have Wicked Weed here, but they can't win an award. So it's like you're okay to bring them in, but you don't want to recognize them. Yeah. So that's just that's, just, that's stupid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the whole thing that we talked about before with the label and thing that they're gonna be doing at the uh, that other festival, like because they're upset with labels and certain label winners can't do it, but you can still participate. But you can't if you win, you can't say you're like the first place winner or second place winner here. You can't use our name out there because your labels are too dirty. It's just stupid. But but there's I like people, just think the whole thing is kind of childish. I mean, it doesn't matter which way you look at it. I just consider the whole thing kind of childish. It's like just yeah. calm, calm down. Yeah, well, it's almost as crazy like the uh, over in the UK where they have a yellow belly. Like people get all fired up about that because you're you're out here, you're representing the clan or blah blah blah. It's like no, it's actually making fun of the clan if you actually know what the beard's about and you actually see the label and what they actually put on it. Yeah, yeah, it was a dog. They're like, but it's still got a picture. Of, it's like, like forget it. We were over your head. Yeah. <laughs> And when I saw that you're beer, you're not bright enough to get sarcasm, then I'm done with you. <laughs> when I saw that beer, personally, because I didn't know that, I went, "Ah, oh, the name's Yellow Belly. That's what the name is." Right. There, there was no reference at all. It was just like you yeah. Say, yeah, you could easily tell to make fun of the Klansmen. Right? You could tell, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, it's, it's pretty clear, yeah. <laughs> but I know some I people say they won't drink. Some people are sarcasm impaired. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm a fan of sarcasm, so I enjoy it. So. I am. I mean, yeah, I'm a longtime fan. Well, I'm Irish Catholic, so I mean that 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 says it all about sarcasm. I think there's you know there's always room for sarcasm, especially in our world nowadays. No, no, it's it's, it's hurtful. In a world where reporters get arrested because they're yelling out questions at someone speaking. Yeah, Isn't that what great. reporters are supposed to do? That's, that's, when I got a journalism degree, that's what we did. So, 
That's how you get heard. The person has to turn around well, and answer your question. Man, he don't whisper it. He don't whisper to the person. They can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> The, more, the one, I mean, I mean, isn't it the thing is the more people there, the louder you have to yell. I mean, that's how it works, right? Yeah. Why is it one -on going up now? God. So now <laughs> the whole beer talk thing is like, just never mind. I don't even get into it, but it's like. <laughs> the, I don't. The, the, whole thread, the whole thread is too long now because everybody's asking Jay the questions and stuff. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, man. Anyway. You guys set your own, however you you tie stuff together or don't tie stuff together, but, you know, you don't have to like everybody. <laughs> you can love everybody. It's all up to you. you just, there's nothing I can do about it, you know, like I said. Mm -mm. I mean, the only thing I can say well, is maybe I, guess I can. That was kind of the question. I mean, I, this I, is, I can referee and air the grievances like in the corner and him in the corner, and you guys will wrestle it out. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I mean, this is your group. I don't care who you invite in. I don't care who's on the panel. But well, you know, he was speaking about my group on Facebook. No, I don't want him in there. I don't want the baggage he brings. I don't want anything to do with him. It is, you know, that particular group is, is when I started, and I don't want him involved in it. So, I mean, I don't have an issue with speaking with him here on your panel. I do have the right not to have him in a group that I started. Well, well as you're the creator of a group, you definitely have that right for sure. I mean, everybody has There are that. things he does I don't approve of, and I don't want that baggage. Mm -hmm. Hey, Paul, did you pick up any other beers today? Yeah, my wife just pointed out I don't have her in my group either, so. Yeah. You don't, you don't want her dealing with her baggage. With that chick's baggage, neither. You that's have because, no that's, that's idea because your wife is your group. How, my, how big my arms are from carrying that baggage for 23 years. <laughs> that's because your wife is your group <laughs> E. <laughs> and see, now, see, she gave me a line for a joke, and then I took it too far, and now I'm not going to get lucky to see her. She's going to need, she's gonna need me to sing Lou Rawls again to her. Um, you will never find <laughs> I, I think she wants you to do some Barry White tonight. Oh, <laughs> baby. That's going deep right there. <laughs> what did you? What beers did you get today, Paul? I picked up uh, B Nectar's Dwarven Fashion, Tuco Style Freakout, well, Mead, the Kill All the Gophers. Now, that's that's something I can get. Yeah. They should have had like a Bill Murray look like one there. That'd have been funny from Caddyshack. And then uh, the uh, it? death you death unicorn. The unicorn of death. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and that's another mead from the, the bee nectar. I, I don't know what it is at the moment. And then I got this uh, devil's juice mead. And there I got episode 13. The Star Trek looking, Star Wars looking thing with a wine barrel. And then I picked up something. From, I picked the Raspberry Ice Bock Lager from Kudu's. And then I accidentally, I bought my friend a um, uh, a mini growler. Okay. Uh, but he wanted a different kind than I did. So, okay, well, I was shit kittens <laughs> by the end of it. So when I gave him the mini growler, I gave him mine and I took his by mistake. So I got the Forever Pink. Uh, in a mini growler, which I don't know what it is, so I better fucking like it. <laughs> <laughs> the other one, you knew what it was, but you just gave him the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. oh well. And hey, you drove, so you'll be taking it all back, so the car will be riding a little low going back. I'm going to hit a bottle shop on the way back, too. So yeah. <laughs> I, have to, uh, I have to make sure I – it's not going to ride low, to not low enough, so i got to hit a bottle shop on the way back, too. Yeah. And he gave me a homebrew. It's a uh, – it's just a plastic bottle. But he said he told me for, to let it sit for a while, but he gave me a homebrew, and he actually gave me a homebrew kit, too. He brought a homebrew kit over. He's like, here you go. Have a kit. So if you want a homebrew, I'm like, okay, cool, yeah. So I'll spice it up with some different hops and different yeast and make a, whole, make a beer out of it. I have a friend in Detroit there. I know, right? <laughs> That's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was, yeah, it was good. I liked it, and he did all the driving, and we went to, down to Eight Mile and, and drove around there for a while. I'm like, wow, this yeah. is this is shit. Like it is, it, it is equivalent to the story. 
I mean, that are literally, it is really like the other side of the tracks there. Like, yeah, it's between the pretty two. bad. Yeah. Awesome. It was pretty good. It was great. And then uh, we went, well, apparently Kunin has two different um, things, but we went to the one uh, a little bit further north that was really nice. Good, uh, good food. Like the food was good. All the beer that I had there was good. And then, like I said, bean nectar was really good. We did tastings there. The only thing is, I like the ancient soul or whatever it was called, which is this yeah. like oak aged special. Of course, I like the real special one. You can't get no, but right. like that was delicious. I was like, yeah. Oh. And you know, you're tasting all these beers, and I don't like they 13, 15, 16, 20 percent. You know what I mean? Like, and you're tasting them, <laughs> and they're tasting good, and you yeah. all your drink. They, the meat, yeah. meats have this sneaky way of sneaking them right up on you. The Mitten State does well with their alcohol. <laughs> when you actually take something from Michigan that's brewed well, yeah, it's brewed very, very well. So it's you got of- some, you got some Arbor. Yeah, drank that. And you got some Found. Did you get any Founders? Yeah, I got Founders. That Sumatran uh, Mountain. That's gone yeah. now. Yeah. Did, did you get any uh, the shorts brewing at all? No, but I. I think I saw some shoots shorts brewing stuff, but they were all ciders. All this, all the shorts. Oh, you want to get some of their beers? They got some pretty good beers there. Too. Yeah, I'm going over to uh, Eight Degrees from Plato, which is a bottle shop in in, Detroit, in Ferndale. Okay. So I'm going to hit that on the way home, and I'm, uh, I'm just going to max my credit card out. That's the plan. <laughs> I need to raise my limit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How much do you need to raise it, sir? I don't know. How much is a pallet of beers? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How much do you just get it and delivered, too? Right, like, right. Because yeah. I don't know if I can get this all on my Hyundai. Yeah. Whatever I have. It was kind of funny. I first thing I got in the rental car, I was like, yeah, okay, how you doing? We're driving, we're driving. I said, what uh, What kind of car did you get? A Ford, a GM? Or he's like, oh, some kind of Hyundai. I said, we're all going to die. <laughs> I said we're going to Detroit. You can't drive one of these in Detroit. We're gonna get killed. <laughs> you gotta drive like a Ford or a Chevy or something. <laughs> like no. <laughs> so Albino says, "Hey, you have more friends in Detroit than Pennsylvania. <laughs> so you're doing well. <laughs> but you're in the woods in Pennsylvania. I mean, you just got like the chipmunks and the deer, right? So yeah. Uh, when I go to Pennsylvania, I don't need humans around me." <laughs> Go away, humans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now Albino's in, in the, talking with everything on the post, so it's like, ah, forget it. I'm not even getting into that. He could have been live. He could have jumped in and yelled and screamed. See, Albino, you should get back on the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you said you head back tomorrow then, right? Yeah, we got to do some testing at the class and stuff and see what we know and all that jazz. And after that, we're heading home. See, now he's back. <laughs> Albino, what, he's are you, back. what are you doing out there, man? <laughs> I'm poking the bear. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> so do now what it's you gotta do, man. <laughs> like now it's on the board. <laughs> oh, that board goes away as soon as you log off. No, no, but it's just funny because everybody's like, "What's what's going on here?" <laughs> oh man. Anyway. Big plans for the weekend for anyone? Beer festivals, beer. But I know Tom you usually go to places on the weekend. You go to some of the different breweries. Uh, no, I'm just hanging out this weekend. And recently, I've only been. I've got one. Uh, I've got a place like five minutes from my house called Show Me Brewing. Right. It's, it's, it's a place that started at a, as a home brew shop. They they have equipment for folks to come in and brew their own, but they they've kind of turned themselves into a. a Whatever smaller than nano brewery, basically, and the brewer at the moment they're brewing only about ten gallons at a time, but they're still keeping twelve taps. Yeah. So they're doing some great stuff. So typically on the weekends, that's where I go for one or two. But now I'm staying home today. I got some other things to attend to and a lot of personal stuff going on. So now I'm just hanging it on. Well, you had a nice little run with the the Rhine guys beers I saw. Yeah, a, a guy named Charles Dreyer. Out of uh, Cincinnati, sent those to me out of the blue. I wasn't expecting them, and yeah, it, it was awesome. So I've got to send him some local stuff back. But yeah, you got your uh, yeah, those were great. Like all of them. Yeah, you got your tasty ones for sure. The, 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 the Truth Imperial IPA was brilliant. I loved the hell out of that beer. Yeah, 
The sad thing is with some of their beers, they only do them on tap at the brewery. Uh, so oh, you can yeah. only put them out in kegs. You can only get them like in growlers and places. But like their best IPA, in my opinion, is called Strikers, their double IPA. Oh, they, they do okay. it once a year. Um, but I've, I know the owner over there and a couple of the other guys that are brewers. I'm like, if you guys ever can, this, you will sell the shit out of this beer. Well, I love the truth. And the, and the Mosaic Pale was brilliant. The mosaic was really good, yeah. yeah. I love the Mosaic Pale. The regular IPA was decent. But but those two knocked my socks off the mosaic and the and the, the imperial IPA and the Panther is a pleasant surprise because they don't usually do a lot of porters. No, they that was that really off. good too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The robust porter was very nice. Yeah. What about you, Albino or Paul? Anything this weekend for? Well, Paul's gonna have beer with him, but he may still go out to some places, do some stuff. I, I might hit. A, I'm gonna hit a bottle shop and I'm gonna do a lot of driving. That's about <laughs> it. so. Saturday and Sunday is just gonna be in house celebrating yeah. what you found. <laughs> so we'll probably have a beer chat this weekend or some point. <laughs> Albino's getting ready for his festival, right? May yes, 27th. May 27th. Yeah. yeah. So how's it all going for that? Ah, uh, horribly. Well, you Standard. got the brewers and everything lined up, and the ticket sales are going, right? Uh, ticket sales are, are going, yeah. Yeah, they're going. Yeah. Well, they said it sucks for you because you can't really drink at it, right? Because you got to do everything else. Yeah, no, uh, legally I'm not allowed to drink anything at it. Yeah. But that would suck, but that's if you want to follow the law. <laughs> Don't be illegal if you get caught, Albino. That's what I learned in New Jersey growing up. <laughs> Don't be illegal that's, that's, you why you the, that's why you wait until the inspector has come and gone. Right. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, keep it at, a coffee uh, mug. We're at 42 breweries right now. Okay. Wow. That's awesome. Well, my, my birthday is actually May 24th, so one of these years I'd like to get up there for that festival. I'm making a birthday bag. There you go. I think we should still look at that idea for next year, doing like the Vegas type thing. Getting all the beer yeah, be awesome. together and cutting loose. Cut loose. <laughs> just make sure there's enough money in the bail fund just in case somebody gets picked up. <laughs> no, <that's all> right. <laughs> never <done. laughs> See, well, we had the bail money, but then um, Paul, decided to go, Paul decided to go to the casino. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't go. I'm trying don't to get it back right now. You have to hang in there, Rodney. <laughs> yep. No, that's that's a, that would be Joe or his dad. They go to the casino. I just go to the bottle shops. Uh, or the hooker. Well, that I do do that. <laughs> Hey, look who it is. It's John H. Yeah. Hey, guys. How are y'all? Hey, John. What's up? I thought you gave the hangouts up. We haven't seen you in so long. Yeah, I've been working a lot. You know, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I just got in about maybe just a mere 15 minutes ago. And um, so I said, well, let me jump on, let everybody know I'm alive. And I'm still here breathing, so. So I think you're doing those diet things or something. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting healthy. He disappeared. Cindy must have got to him. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, you read that book, the, didn't you? You read, you read her book. <laughs> yes, wonderful Cindy. Cindy, I tell you. Did you have Cindy doing um, any videos? Did she show up on any of your videos? Um, I don't think she's commented in any of my videos, to, to be honest with you, but um, – I noticed some of her other posts that she's mentioned in some of the uh, other video. I'm like, wow, this, this woman's really very interesting. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll leave it right there. <laughs> Even Mormon's a bad name. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and where's she from originally? She from from she's from out there. Out I, read, in, uh, I read a thing online that she was from actually Uzbekistan and she came to the U.S. and she lives in Utah. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sure I'm sure that's accurate information. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there on her. Mm. Or wow. the uh, the uh, urban myth if she is a person, because like Paul even brought up like, 15 years, like two, three years ago, she said it was 15 years she's been typing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> Yeah. Unless he's in dog years or something, I don't know. 
Dog ears might be accurate. <laughs> <laughs> so That's what's the, been that, up in the beer community? I don't know. What's been up in the beer community? I, I haven't been really paying much attention and Well tonight we were know, talking about what's been beer. going on. We were talking about wicked weed and some of the hypocrisy on the crap right. scene and if it's a bad thing, if it's a good thing, if it's just a thing that's going to happen as far as crash hey, brews. Hey, Rod, let me interrupt real fast. Todd just sent me a message that he didn't get the uh, invite if you want to send him another one real quick. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Does he not know how to work his computer again? Because I sent it right to him. Well, he said he didn't receive it. He's probably looking under my Facebook page message, so we switch over. Oh, yeah. <coughs> I sent it to him on the personal one. I should get like have a YouTube video of people technology to people. That would probably get some views. This is how you work your shit. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> yep, he responds on that one. Never received it. Technologically challenged, so yeah. <laughs> Isn't Todd like a millennial? Should he know this shit? Todd, Todd knows. Yeah, Todd's walked me through some difficulties. <laughs> That's the good thing about being a Gen X, where we kind of pick up both sides, the baby boomers and the millennial. I used to have my son show me everything. Mm. Yeah. What's, um, what's that was Wicked Weed? Um, um, anything new? Um, what was it? Yeah, Wicked Weed. It, was that the one that was bought out by um, AB and Bev, right? Yeah, yeah, they bought like a... I don't just think oh, 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 they didn't do a total oh, oh, wide, I don't believe. Oh, oh, they bought out enough of them. Oh, 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 oh. The, the, the evil empire. <laughs> <laughs> but I hear the thing that. is, they're, they're not the only one. Other people have been bought out, but nobody seemed to went off their rails until Wicked Weed did it. Well, look, let me just, my thoughts on these things. Look, I, I think it's inevitable. Not all of them, but, you know, you, you still got, to me, I think the ones that I will... I doubt we'll ever turn or say, hey, we'll give it up, you know, like Stone or um, uh, what's the guy, Dogfish, uh, the guy that runs. Um, Sam Callion. Cam Jolly. Sam Callion, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 is that his brewery? What was the, what's the name of his brewery again? Is that is Dog it Dogfish? Dogfish. Dogfish, yeah. You know, um, some Delaware. of those. Yeah. And, and, and Rogue, you know, out in Portland. And I don't think these guys are going to, you know, sell out. I think they're going to hold strong. Those have been around, you know, I think they're going to hold firm and just say, hey, and we'll, we'll deal with it. Whatever happens, happens. But there's going to come a point. Hey, well, we'll guys don't say, hey we got a nice little Stone. offer for you. You know, what do you well, say? The big, the big thing about Stone and, and people like BrewDog now is they didn't need to sell out. They're getting complained that their macro shills and all this stuff because they're so big now. Right. That, so they didn't need to sell out. They just sold out because of the size they are. So now it's like, if you don't sell out, you still get yelled at if you do well. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, all right. That's another thing that everybody can get their panties in a bunch about. Good. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to sit over here and get drunk. <laughs> I'm going to drink know. the beer. No, you can't guys. argue with that logic, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, like, like oh, for example, with Blue Point. Weed, I'll drink that for you. You don't have to worry about it. It's all good. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> like the folks with Blue Point. Blue Point up in uh, New York. Patch up. There's another one. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I mean, if they held out and, you know, only got, what, $24 million, you sold out, sold yourselves out to you know, Air Hazard Bush, I would have waited and asked for more. And, and now, I mean, I, I don't know if the, if the owners are still involved. I, I doubt it. But, you know, I, I know the main reason for these things that are happening is all about, you know, distribution and, you know, pushing yourself out there to other areas why they'll get in bed with some of these, with, with the big boys. Right. But, um... Well, I mean, right now, people that had, which I'm sure, Paul, you probably got some left hand while you're there in Michigan, but left hand, well, you got to get some of that for you, leave too, because that's pretty good stuff. No, you don't want left hand? <laughs> you're more of a right hand kind of guy. Oh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> but uh, but left hand, you know, they, they signed. It hasn't happened yet, but it's about to happen with PBR. So PBR is opening their distribution. So are people going to stop drinking left hand now? I doubt it because left hand makes some pretty damn good beers. Right. Well, I've had some left hand stuff. I like their wake up bed. 
There you go. There's Todd. Wake up, Dad. Is good, yeah. Yeah, wake up, Dad. I'm a Gen Xer, by the way. Oh, okay. You're not a millennial. All right. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Gen Xer. He's a Gen Xer. Well, even as a Gen Xer like myself, you should know how to work things. Todd demands a retract. Oh, no, I don't want to work. Shit, Rod, you didn't say it to me. <laughs> I'm going to do a video. This, this is just for Todd how to work We're gonna shit. Have... <laughs> oh yeah so um i just just, just say like with left hand are people going to stop drinking that now you know? someone, will, someone will say it someone will say it but yeah that's a good beer though someone there's so don't worry there's a someone to get outraged about something sooner or later <laughs> what? <laughs> well, that's not really, people don't get outraged anymore do they that's outrageous I can't I'm believe outraged. you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm outraged. completely outraged it's an outrageous thing that happens every day it seems don't upset cindy's doll collection <laughs> <laughs> yeah whatever you do <laughs> <laughs> she do a video of a video watching Cindy's do her video. Mm. I do special things. I don't want to give it to you. <laughs> that doesn't need to be on video. <laughs> uh, too late. Yeah. Man, beer, pig, stone rules, team stone. Man, bear, big, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. Yeah. I've actually touched that man. You touched the bear, bear pig? Yes, he's very huggable. <laughs> Was it more, more man or more bear or more pig? <laughs> I've, uh, I, I found out it changes sensual. as you go around the body. He <laughs> says. <laughs> Was it consensual? <laughs> no, I don't do consensual. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> <sighs> Is he in Canada? <coughs> no, he's in San Diego. He's in San Diego. Okay, because he was telling Albino about I thought he mentioned Albino's festival. But that actually that was uh Chris Lizak. Why is that? I don't know why William you know William's out there, William Kepler. Some pretty good comments out there tonight. It's been an active comment board. Would you consider William a millennial too? <laughs> William? Can we invite like Chris Peters on? William's a boomer. I was just saying, William a millennial. Have you met William? <laughs> yes, I have. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. <laughs> Todd, you got a baby face. I thought you might have been a millennial. My bad. Don't take it personally. <laughs> no, no, that's just giving me a hard time. Blaming me for something that wasn't my fault. <laughs> yeah. I thought you grew up not knowing MTV used to play music videos. <laughs> <laughs> what is it now? Just an just a, uh, entertainment channel, basically? Pretty much. <laughs> I didn't even know MTV still existed. Yeah, it's me too. And, 16 and pregnant is entertainment. <laughs> yeah, you can't really call it entertaining because it's not entertaining. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> I would think for that guy that got her pregnant, that's usually a shotgun in his face. <laughs> yeah. I remember um, Headbangers Ball and Yo MTV Raps. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You remember back when MTV actually stood for music? Good old Matt. Good old Matt. Matt Penfield. Yeah. yeah. Downtown, Ju- downtown Julie Brown and. Yeah. <laughs> same, he's trying, same he's trying to prove his Gen X now. Adam Curry. Why did call me out? Now I gotta go there. Yeah, I want to prove my Gen X hood. <laughs> I still remember. He remembers uh, going to the mall and hanging out in the arcade. Yes. I do. Damn straight. I still, <laughs> I, st- um, I still remember when they did the first reality show. Remember the real world? When they did the first reality oh, show? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was actually a good show. I They didn't fuck it up. And as yeah, soon the as they made more of it. Really the first yeah. couple seasons were actually maybe real. I actually liked when Puck got on there. When he got kicked out, it was funny watching him on there because he brought drama to the house. <laughs> Where's yeah, that guy? He was, he, was, he was a piece of work. I'll tell you that. And then he said the real world suicide, whatever challenge, not suicide, uh, 
Road rules. I was just saying, I, I was saying, I would watch suicide reality TV. What kind of sick shit do you watch, bro? We're, we're taking this one take. It's only one take here. We can't mess one it take. up. One take. We can't. Don't fuck it up. Man. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, no, no redos on that one. This is this is real. This is as real as it gets. <laughs> this is as real as it gets. Can you get the phone? Well, shit, we had like the first reality TV show with cops. Before we had, we had cops and stuff that was on. I was like, mm-hmm. actually, people getting arrested. Oh, he's running. He's running. This is it's a bad like, idea. Why hey, y'all remember? <laughs> yeah. Why would you remember the other show? Car? If you knew you had That's incredible. Why would you tell him to open it? <laughs> that's <Yeah>. incredible. <laughs> oh, that's incredible? Yeah. Yeah, that's another one. Come on, right before Monday Night Football. We actually had a spot here in Cincinnati that was on. That's incredible. And it sits like on the incline of a hill. When well, you take your foot off the brake and out of neutral, it actually will roll your car uphill. Well, gravity hill. Yeah, but it's actually not like an illusion. But it looks like it feels like you're sitting down there, but you're really not, and it's really weird. And then he hit a tree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so did, you, did you ever drive? I mean, have did you ever just drive? And you ever just driving, and you're driving, and then you stop. And then you look at the road, and it looks like the road keeps going. Sometimes I don't have much. Do you have to drink? But I'm just saying. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Did the car stop? And you're flying through the air? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's okay. Boof. <sighs> yeah, I'm lucky enough. I'd hit a nice padded soft deer. You know what I mean? That would stop me in the road. Yeah, you got enough deer around where you're at. I'm sure. Exactly. When the fur gets bad, like during May this season, they get all over the place. Everyone's still – the uh, some people in here are still recuperating from what happened when I got in. That I didn't – I missed the tail end of it. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. Paul. I thought chilling in a lot of stuff, too. You know, you know what it is, Paul? You got in tonight, like when I got in the other night on the episode at the end, when everything was like going. Oh, yeah. So that's you tonight. <laughs> yeah, I'm wrong. Yeah, about a week, week and a half ago. Yeah. Although we don't have as much of the awkwardness afterwards to see. Everybody's still going forward. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like when that one happened, it was like it was a Louisiana funeral or something. Everybody's all down. And, <laughs> and I'm like, tell me what happened. All oh, you guys aren't saying anything. I'm like, what happened? Oh, well, they had to call. They had to take five minutes to call. And then Peter's like, "I shouldn't have cut it off." <laughs> Why did I hit stop? <laughs> Shut the fuck up! Uh-huh. Yeah, screaming and screaming. That, that was fun. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah. we'll see here. Oh, yeah. oh, Riley. Riley. Riley, William Kepley. So, um, um. Let's see. Did any of y'all watch the Derby? And what beer were y'all drinking during the Derby? If y'all any of y'all give a shit about horse racing. It was funny because I'm actually the one that lives in Kentucky and I don't even care about horse racing. Yeah. So I, didn't, I didn't even watch it. I just saw it was like a muddy track and I was like, ah, I'm going to change the channel. Yeah. The Derby. No, I didn't catch it. Another event that I don't care much about, you know, they say, well, you got to be there. Or just oh, who cares about the event? You got to be there, be in the atmosphere. I said, right. still, this horse is going around for two minutes. Do I care? So I don't have a gambling problem, so I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things I don't like about the horse racing outside of it is just crazy just riding a wild animal anyway but they do these like, they do these top athletes over periods like you know athlete number 100 of all time athlete 89 of all you get like this 55 or whatever and they're like affirmed i'm like no affirmed was a fucking horse it's not an athlete you cannot put an athlete like, put a horse in as an athlete of all the best athletes that ever played a game the horse had no idea was playing a game someone jumped on the back started kicking it and hitting it and just fucking took off <laughs> I agree. It's not the same thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, they need to go back into the old days, like when the loser lost, they get taken out and they shoot it, and they eat it. Like that's the old <laughs> day. You know, that's back, back in the old days. And then all the small children would come out and eat it like wolves. You know what I mean? Like that's that's what I miss. More hope for me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> 
pre-industrial revolution. <laughs> the good, the good That's one. when you could have child labor too. Well, yeah. What else we got? Yeah. They good for it. <laughs> you're gonna run around, and run around with this bucket, and do some work. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you're gonna run around, pick shit up. Let's do this. That's we'll make I a game out of us. it. Yeah, I said, here's a couple trash bags. You're gonna run around, pick shit up. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna sit down and have a beer with you. Yeah. Kids, are, kids are great for that. If you're really good, I'll let you eat this week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are you drinking, Ty? <laughs> Um, oh, so pretty from 18th Street Brewery in Hammond, Indiana. It's a uh, dry hopped rye saison. Okay. Pretty decent. Yeah, it's pretty tasty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't get a lot of the as much of the rye in it as, as I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't see many breweries around Fresh Lick. What's up with that? We got a casino. Yeah, there's not much up that way. Did you did you already go up there? No, it's uh June twenty second. Okay, Thursday. You I'll let you know when I'm coming through that area. Yeah, there's not there's not a ton going up that way. They talked about the one bar, thirty three brick or whatever. It's supposed to have a lot of the craft beers there. They got a lot of Larry Bird stuff as a sports bar. It's supposed to be a pretty big sports bar, yes. It, it was in there, Indiana. Indiana. Yeah, up in French Lake. Yeah, French Lake. French Lake okay, yeah. You know, are you surprised you never went to the college game, become a college coach? I knew you were successful as an NBA coach. I know that year, what was it, 98? Yeah. You know, I think, I don't know, what was the record? Well, they, uh, made him that, they gave him that GM position at Indiana that he got. Yeah. Yeah. That was, um. I mean, he seemed like <laughs> things were going to kind of turn out well if they just gave it a little more time, but, you know. Yeah. But, um, oh, well. Uh, but um um see what else um what beers are y'all excited to drink during the summer if that's a silly question to ask (laughs) (laughs) all of them yeah drink during the summer all of them too (laughs) first one step on your hands you say what's in the cooler what do you got over there Exactly. We all know Rob. Be anything the in- element of surprise. Hey, I got hams. <laughs> hey, I got Milwaukee's best. Hey, I got this. Hey, it could be Yingling, whatever it is. <laughs> Rob just needs the shandies. He needs all the shandies. No, no, no shandies. No I don't <laughs> Although, Tom, I was surprised when he did the lining Google shandy. I, well, see, the only reason I brought those, we were going to our daughter's for Easter. I thought she might like those. You know, they were. It was only about fourteen bucks for the twelve pack. Yeah. So I just picked those up thinking she might like them. You the only beer that I can focus on right now is the Raspberry Ice Bock Lager from Coonan's because it better be fucking good. Because mm. it was thirty-two dollars a bottle, so it better be fucking good. That <laughs> that kind of price, because there ought to be an orgasm involved. I'm going to tell you, if not, I'll use the bottle somehow, but I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Something's happening. Yeah, something's <laughs> happening, damn it. Get those rogue condos. <laughs> <laughs> it's already got a year. It's got more than a year on it already, so, I mean, that should be also a good thing, too. And I don't know what ABV it is. It, then my guess is, like, guess you know, 1.5 you know, alcohol by volume. Some stupid. Oh, what else they didn't put on the bottle, huh? Oh, probably not. Yeah, that's that's trivial information. <clears throat> Has anybody had any of the not your mom's uh, beers? No. From who? Are those the same people that do not your father's? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have like a uh, an, an apple pie one, a strawberry oh, rhubarb, I and I think a lemonade or a sweet tea. I can't remember, or both maybe. I haven't seen those. Okay. Those are not beers. Let's just establish that right now. Let's just establish that right now. It's flavored stuff. Yeah, they are. I was just asking if anybody had one. I actually had one over the weekend. Uh, somebody brought one to the house. Yeah. <laughs> you did it raise your estrogen level? Right, Jay. Kicked in the ass tonight. <laughs> oh, I apologize. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking Todd was the Anthony Michael Hall character in Breakfast Club. <laughs> oh, 
I'm a ball and I'm going home. <laughs> oh wait, I am at home. I guess I'll just take my ball. Yeah. <laughs> so where'd you get that? Where'd you get that wall sign? Yeah, that's pretty cool with the good spirits. Todd, which one? Oh, that's one. Your, the, well, your yeah. Well, your left side, all right. Um, Good spirits. I think. Let's see, my wife picked that up, but I'm not 100 sure where she got it. It's pretty cool. I like that one. I want to get some more stuff, but I don't know where I'm going to put it at. I'm kind of like. Uh, I don't know if you ever watched Terry's videos from over in the UK, where he's like running out of the room in his shed right now. Right now. Put some stuff up in my other in a room. Just have it like yours. Yeah. Well, Tom usually does his TV set, too. The rest of my basement has all sports stuff on it. Your mail and oh, nothing wrong with that, either. I just said I think to William, because William wanted to jump in. I'm, I'm doing a... I got to redo all my... Where I go back, back down to the cellar and do more dungeon beer reviews and stuff. I got to go back to the old ways. The piece, some people are told me they want me to back. They want me to go back in the dungeon where I belong. So, around you, Paul. We need you back in the dungeon. Yep, exactly. So, the guilt. Yeah, I think within the next month or so, we'll start brewing beer again. Yeah, I need to start brewing. The new uh, SJ4 2017 challenge came out. It's very intricate, and you have to you have to brew three different beers for it. So it's 15 gallons of beer you got to brew yeah. for the for the challenge, and it's very specific. You have to not use stuff here, but use stuff here, this here, not there. Then. So it's been a. I'm gonna have to write something down. Like I don't do these usually. orders like it's AB InBev or something. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> don't worry. If you if once you get done, they'll actually buy thirty three percent of what you make. So that's good. I'll take yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Craig said, "Move all the bodies first, Paul." <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm I'm, just re I'm, re I'm renovating my whole house, so I gotta clean up everything. The fucking basement's destroyed, so I gotta clean it all out and do lots yeah. of things. I gotta do some stuff around the uh, pool area. Get the, get it ready before the kids jump in. You know the weather's been warm down here in Mobile, but yeah, you know, I gotta yeah. get this stuff ready. You just haven't had any time. I've been working a lot, so. Michigan's oh, been weird. I, I wake up and it's 28 degrees, and we get out of yeah, class and it's 88. It's like, ah, oh, what the hell? You feel, your nipples are sticking out like a son of a bitch. <laughs> and you get out of it. Oh, it's cold. Okay, we're good. Then you get out there and you're sweating. The sweat just hits you because it's just hot as hell. Yeah. I like I like seeing all the sun and the shine stuff because in Pennsylvania it rained for a month straight when I left. So I'm really happy there's sun. So that's that's pretty good. I like that. But uh, it's an image it's, nobody will get out of their head all night long now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's cold. I'll tell you what. Don't, don't things happen. But uh, yeah, it's just. Uh, Pretty intense weather sometimes in, in Michigan. I didn't realize it's it's that cold and that hot. But it's, it's interesting. where I am, there's nothing to see. It's this weird thing where if you look, you look at the distance, everything is so flat. You see, you know, sagebrush and some really shitty trees, and that's about it. You can't really see stuff. And it's either <clears throat> a field with nothing in it. Or industrial wow. complex. Has it been uh, heat with the heat <laughs> here while you're here this week? No, very dry. Yeah, which is a nice change because usually by now, PA sucks. So. No, it's good. I'm, I'm I like it overall. It just you know, hotels suck, and uh, this hotel has you know walls made of paper mache. <laughs> so yeah, so you kind of hear everything. Does it have the quarter? Is not going to cost a lot of money. Quarter in the bed starts taking. <laughs> if it had the quarter in the bed. I wouldn't be talking to you guys. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. 
it just it seems like if I actually had some more time, I could actually go to home and see a bunch of stuff. Yeah. yeah. But the only problem is by the time you get down there, it's already 8 o'clock, so if something's already closed or most of that. You have very little time. You got to you get the round car from the guy too, so it's a little bit. If I was in with someone for a long time who knew where they were going, it would be better. But there is stuff to do, and the breweries that I have gone to so far, even though it was only two, are very good. Yeah. And apparently there's a better mead brewery, or a very good mead brewery as well, down the street from the other one. Yeah, it just you got your time constraints. You got time constraints, unfortunately. Like I said, Michigan, Michigan, pretty good stuff with alcohol. All I heard was the word alcohol. I think Gene's getting feedback. <laughs> am I? Am I getting feedback? Seriously? Yeah. Uh, let me put my headphones on. Uh, I got the fan on. I got the TV on mute. You're not so, going to fall asleep again, are uh, you? fell asleep one night. I came back. You were sleeping. Oh, yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> For real? <laughs> <laughs> I saw he poured another beer, so I don't think he's going to sleep yet. <laughs> like this, like, you know? uh, exactly. <laughs> I fell asleep a week ago. Did you? <laughs> oh, yeah, you did. You were not in there. Huh? Good. No, I'm fine. I wasn't. <laughs> I don't know how I was. Yeah. That's yeah. for me. That's how I was. So a week ago, I drank 16 beers or some shit. And I, uh, you know what? I'm fine. What? Are we good? Yeah. We're... yeah we're... <laughs> so when you're at PA, Paul, do you drink like a lot of the Claw beer from out of uh, Maryland, I think? Uh, Duclaw. We have some Duclaw there. A lot of we get a lot of stuff I get I really don't care about. Um, really still like water. Cool. You get the still water stuff? No, not where I am. Okay. You got this yeah, Saison yeah. Farmhouse Ale um, I, I, I bought at Rouse's here. It was from the, the brewer's based in Maryland. I thought it was excellent. Yeah, I guess yeah, it's over here. here. Yeah. Friend, I mean, I think I've had a Stillwater thing, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, Duke Claw, so far, the one thing I really like by them is their Hellraiser yeah. IPA. Yeah, that's their, pretty good. Their Devil's Milk is pretty good. Well, Devil, uh, uh, their uh, Hell on Wood is really good. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. And then, uh, oh, they have some of their big beer series, like their Goliath and things like that. It's pretty crazy ass. Like, you know, 18, 19%, 19% ale. ale. That's pretty good. Uh, actually, the, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. Heavy Seas Brewing Company, their uh, 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 Blackbeard's Black Breakfast. Beard. That's a really good bourbon barrel aged Imperial Porter. Porter. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to get that again. Mostly stuff around there. Troves and victory and bullshit like that. Normal stuff. Nothing too crazy. Well, it depends on where you go, though, too. <laughs> there's a there's a bottle shop like an hour like an hour and a half away from my house. That's amazing. I just never get up there. That's a long way to drive for me with a tight schedule. So it's like I really re rarely get up there. But if I do get up there, I'm buying some serious fucking beer from all over the world. You know, vintage stuff. You know, pretty crazy shit. They have lots and lots and lots of stuff. Yeah. The only problem is, depending on where it's from, depending on the style, don't expect to buy fresh beer. Yeah. That's the problem. You know? I think like I need to drink some more overseas beers. I got one spot that really does good getting the beers from Germany and. France and UK and different areas. I just don't get down there enough, but I need to. I want to start drinking some more of those. I found, like I said, that that one that was the uh, I guess it was the Rouse beer that green and tan one, the one that Dean did. I'm not gonna try to he say did the, the name. He well, if it uh, he did the tan and, and red one, which is the Yorbach, the action color Yorbach. And it was this was then, the, then the, 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 something. Oh, uh, the uh, is and then you have the green one, which is the Oxlan Kella um, Icor, whatever. It's a, not Icor. It's the uh, basically it's the oak smoked right uh, double bock. Yeah. Double bock, right? Yeah, that's right. I said Ralph's for the double bock. Um, yeah, yeah. That is, which is that more charry. Is freaking smoked. good. Yeah, and that's more charry <laughs> smoked instead of that honey cured ham smoke. Yeah, the oak. Yeah, it was like drinking so, bacon. They all they drink they make. How is that bad? Oh, exactly. <laughs> Right. I know. Bacon. bacon. Which I would like to get to one of the bacon beer festivals they have around the country at some point. 
chocolate covered bacon. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, they've got candy bacon up here now, like at the Bob Evans and a couple places. Are we starting to run out of flavors for beer, guys? Candy bacon now? Well, no, it's just candy bacon. It's not beer. It's candy bacon. Yep, you can actually get chocolate-covered bacon. It's good. Mm. Yeah. It's called Flying Pigs. <laughs> Is it called Flying Pigs? It was there. I, I saw it was getting Gettysburg at a chocolate shop, and it was this giant – not giant, but it was a, a pig with wings, and it was a – and I found out it was bacon, and you know, with chunks of bacon, and it. It, it was good. It was expensive, but it was good. Although I've had, I've had bacon in beer. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. That's what That's they're, a... they're not done inventing and changing and doing things. It's it's yeah. as long as people have ideas, they'll be making crazy ass <laughs> beer, and hopefully it's good. You know, if it gets firm, it throw it in the tank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah Will it ferment? Yeah. That's what you have to, that's the, let's right. find out. <laughs> that's like this place in New York where they oh, do all really? they do all deep fried food. So anything you request, I'll try to deep fry it for you. Because the only thing that really they had trouble with were like Skittles and a couple other things. But otherwise, they would put it in there and they'll deep fry the hell out of something. Fry this, deep fry that. Yeah. <laughs> Am I getting feedback or somebody's got their video? Is it coming from me? Let's see. It's coming from William. Is it William? Yeah. Oh, unmute yourself, Gene. I was trying to see if it was you. Yeah. Is it coming from William? It was yeah. coming from William. Uh oh, that tingled my earlobes. That was you, William. You got a little feedback. It might be your volume is too close to the microphone. Need headphones. That's all. Hot mic. Hot mic. Hot mic. Hot mic. Look out, people. It's <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Hendrix. You know, going on there. That old skit when uh, Saturday Night Live and it was Will Ferrell and they had Aerosmith on there. He's doing their mic check. He's like, "Hot mic. Hot mic. Syphilis. Syphilis. Syphilis." <laughs> 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 uh, I don't want yeah. anything that looks like a really shitty Imperial Stout. That's my problem. Once I bought all these stouts, and they're all shit. Yeah. So I don't want any more of them. I don't want to have to choke down a beer I'm not really crazy about. And that's the thing about me and beer. Like I won't drink this if I don't really like it. Yeah. So I'm thinking about not reviewing and just drinking this Lagunitas beer because it'll probably be pretty good. So <laughs> I've got that one in the fridge. I gotta still drink that one. <laughs> We'll see. Craig says you can get bacon ice cream. Bacon, yeah. Sh- uh, you can also get breast milk ice cream. He said breast milk ice cream. Yeah. Oh mercy! Yeah, yeah. I think you're, I think you're getting blowback, William. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what the deal is with it. But, your volume, or is your? I think you get William. The only the settings are the same as they've always been, so I don't understand it. Well, it could be Google screwing up too again. It must be. I think it's an external problem. There's a lot of people been having issues with Google. That. <laughs> Yeah. I'll try to sign on again. Okay. Just mute your chat. You're on the cast. You don't need to watch it. <laughs> That's how that works. <laughs> oh, I really read a, the Giants tonight. Oh, mercy. Yeah, so. It's okay. I don't know. This is, this is okay. Hey, the Penguins won. Hey, I don't you didn't watch you. sports. I don't. Someone told me. <laughs> are you talking about the, or, or are you talking about actual Penguins? 
Oh, no, yeah, I have a whole other <laughs> team. Yeah. I don't know, maybe you're talking about actual penguins beating up yeah. on a polar bear or something. Yeah, I, t- I take different animals and I throw it in and see who wins. And the penguins won today, you know. But, you know, I, uh, yeah, the, the instructor I pull goes, for the penguins. They're just adorable. The, the under, the, uh, my instructor's like, well, none of my teams won last night. And Edmonton lost. I said, I, I said, the. Because my friend posted something, I said the Penguins. I think lost. He goes, "No, they won." I said, "Good, fuck your team." <laughs> you know, I was like, "That's good." And he was like, "Well, that's not very good on your score." I'm like, "Don't worry, my score will be fine. <laughs> you just shut up and be mean." And so that was like, so now I know the Penguins won. I was like, "Yay, good for you!" <laughs> so anybody else? I said, well, "We are talking about hockey, right?" And he's like, yeah. "Yeah." I'm like, "Okay, cool." I just wanted to. Check. <laughs> Uh, I see. That's the only thing I know because I know the Penguins, the Panthers, the Pirates, and the Steelers, and that's all I know. Sometimes I get confused who plays who, but I figure it out. You know, I can generally figure it out. <laughs> Craig <laughs> says get blow twice. I'm like, well, I'm not sure what Craig is saying there because getting blow is a bad thing in the U.S. Yeah, it's and, blow. And if you misspell and, and say got and, blow twice, he should be telling him. <laughs> 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 he should be off of this happy place. <laughs> Blue velvet. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look at me. Something I lost that movie. <laughs> yeah, the part when he, um, Dennis Hopper says, you know, screw Heineken, perhaps Blue Ribbon. Yeah, that's a good beer. Yeah. Good beer. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, speaking of that, do y'all heard, uh, I don't know if this is a true story, but uh, I don't know if you, you know, I got locked off, but speaking of what you said, not looking at somebody, Steve Harvey, you know, mentioned that, uh, that, you know, he doesn't want people looking at him, talking to him or something. It was something that was, he mentioned or posted, I don't know if it's true or not, if he said that, that if anybody who... Does it goes on his show or interview him, whatever? Hey, don't look at me, don't talk to me, don't do nothing. You know, I don't know. <laughs> celebrities <laughs> can't be. Yeah, celebrities oh, like, can't be. Like he's being an asshole or something. Yeah, yeah that that possibly. <laughs> possibly. Cocaine is no of a drug. <laughs> hey, I I had to figure out who that was. So I was like, who? Huh? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, like, I know. I don't. I don't feel like like old. Like you know, I know like who like Robert Shaw was. Like the old stuff. I don't know people from now because I don't watch TV. And I right, wait, wait, who's that? Who's that? <laughs> Never. Okay, I got it. I got it. I'm okay. here. We're good. Yeah, I just don't watch oh, yeah, TV. The family so I'm like feud way guy. behind the time. <laughs> who's he? Who's I'm like 15 he? or 16 years past. Like okay, what? Okay, I gotta figure out where the hell was I? Okay, where are you? Okay, I got it. I got you. I'm there. Yeah, he was on that uh, shit from fucking Richard Dawson used to host. Oh, Family Feud. Mm-hmm. Family Feud. That's yeah. it. So I remember Richard Dawson, but I don't know like the other people. I had to figure out. Who yeah, was. even uh, Louis, Anderson, Louis Anderson did it for a bit on there. Yeah, Richard and um, yeah, Ray Combs. Ray yeah, and then you had uh, John, whatever his name is, from the Seinfeld show. Uh, John Allen. Yeah, <laughs> John, someone, whatever it was. Richard, 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 for a while. All right, I remember Richard Dawson and the Running Man, Killian. Yeah, <laughs> Killian. yeah he was great in that movie. Yes. Yeah. Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> the other day I was watching the Total Recall with Schwarzenegger. I I, I realized. Yeah, man, that was a good movie back then, man. Shit, you know, like those are some good action movies back then. That Die Hard and um, mm-hmm. Roadhouse and some of these other films, right? Yeah. You know, those are some. Yeah. Some is Total Recall films. is Total Recall the one with the three, the girl with the three tits? Yeah. 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 Okay. See, I was in an awkward <laughs> state back then. And all I remember is the tits. That's it. Was a different thing. Yeah, I'm sure it was a fine movie, but I was like tits. Wait. 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 <laughs> so, like the only one about looking at. That thinks that like James Comey basically got like Craig from Friday and got fired on his day off. Yeah, <laughs> he got Probably fired. So. He wasn't in the office. If you he investigate like, the boss, you're gonna get fired. I mean, he found out like he found out like an athlete watching ESPN. Like, as long as he was investigating Clinton, but boy, 
He investigates Trump and he gets fired. Oh, does he? All, does he? <laughs> Senator Watson ticker go by. Comey has been fired. What? <laughs> no one called me. <laughs> yeah, heard it on the news. Yeah. Yeah. Step into my what? office. Investigate your boss. You're going fired. to get fired. <laughs> It's like I was a Cincinnati Bengal. They just cut me and put it on the news. <laughs> Personally, you know what? I don't give a crap. All I know is that there is more to come. Comey's oh, going to yeah. talk. Comey's going to talk. You know, you had the guy today, whatever it was, McCabe, said that, you know, there was never any talk about there was dissension in the, in the FBI with, with, Qua- with, uh, with Comey. So... You know, hey, hey. that there was some sort of that he was running a uh, not running a, a tight ship that he was wasn't doing a good job you know McCabe said it was you know that's not true and you know all the news channels went jumped on it you know Fox News kind of dismisses oh he's just a hack or a Democrat whatever it is but you know which is not true oh my god damn somebody ran into a motorcycle into a truck and he got caught on fire that's in uh, China. Shit. But anyway. I was going to say, uh, window, like, put the Yeah, something like that. But, uh. But, uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, uh. Uh. So, you know, and all I know is that there's, there's going to be more stuff coming out. Comey's going to talk. You know, you got the McKay guy came out talk. I'm sure that the, uh. They said that the that the attorney general was almost resigned uh, yesterday or the day before about all this. So you know, look, there's more stuff going to be dropping, you know, about everybody. And you know what? The country doesn't really need this right now. We don't want another Watergate or anything else. We just <laughs> we actually we just, yeah, we we're in office America. where we didn't vote for. Run the fucking country, <laughs> and that's it. You know. I think the air needs to be clear, so I say get it all out now and be I done with it. Yeah, I, I think I think if there's ever a time when something need to, you know, this ain't the time to sweep something under the rug. It's time for this all to be done. Yeah, right. That's how we ended up being here. Everybody kept sweeping every year. Yeah, we've been swept under the rug enough. I mean, it is time. But it is. It is time to clean it out. I mean, we got this guy with the bad hair. <laughs> <laughs> enough already. I don't think it matter no matter who which one we got elected. Oh, yeah. I think that I said it back then. There wasn't gonna be enough popcorn to enjoy that whole show. <laughs> We're just over a hundred days and people are out of popcorn already. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. So what are you drinking tonight, William? I just finished a uh I had a bush signature copper lager. Ah, Oh, you can still get that. I can't get that anywhere, man. That thing is left Mobile, Alabama. It's gone. I was able to pick up a 12-pack before they took it off the shelves, but it is officially discontinued by AB. It's uh, oh, did they the best beers they made, actually. Yeah. It was a really good beer. I definitely agree with you, William. That was a really uh, good beer. And it, it, it befuddles me why they couldn't make this successful. To me, this beer is better than the uh, Union traditional lager. It's five point seven percent alcohol versus four point five for the Yingling, and I think it has better flavor. And how a company so large as AB InBev couldn't market this beer and and make it a decent seller, I don't understand. But you know, I don't make those decisions. Yeah. And I don't right know now, that they have a market for amber ale drinkers, and I don't think they could cross over to enough pseudo craft drinkers to make it work. I, I don't think it was a great beer, but I don't think it was a horrible beer either. I don't know that it's any worse than than, than the youngling that you mentioned. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that's why I don't I don't think there's a crossover. It might not be. I wouldn't use the word pseudo, but it, it definitely didn't find I a market. Would. <laughs> uh, I would. I just did. <laughs> quasi. But right now, uh, see, now, we're, now we're now we're now we're arguing semantics. Uh, right now, I've got a Genesee Cream Ale. There you go. I, uh, on a road trip, I picked up a 24-pack uh, of these, 24-pack bottles for thirteen sixty nine in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, at the In-N-Out Beverage Warehouse, which has a huge selection of beers. Oh, Many I've right. never seen before. They have brands I've never seen before. Uh. Still drinking through some of these. A few minutes ago, someone made a reference to Robert Shaw. 
in the movie Jaws, fall, he crushed yeah. in, he mm-hmm. crushed in Narragansett can in the movie Jaws. Yeah, yeah, damn That's Skippy, you're right. Yeah, that's a great reference. Jaws. Yeah, that's a good movie. That's classic. Robert Shaw, he was a great actor. Are you really drinking now? You still going through those good woods? Socks in the water, the cage going to water. Uh, the new Belgium Citradelic. Oh, okay. I like this one. Label? No, it's the uh, Rhino they did. They have two. They have a Citradelic IPA. This is the Golden Ale. Okay. I don't so, know that I've seen that one. Yeah, so they came out with this one a little while back. And I think it's pretty good. Guys, I'm going to have to jump off here. It's pretty get good. Up. Oh, yeah, you can get up too, yeah. I've, I've had three beers, and I've got a 52-year-old bladder, so I got to go. <laughs> I mean, this, this could be like a 15, 20-minute piss. It's hard to tell. <laughs> so anyways, take it easy, guys. All right. so, you can go before you get there. <laughs> hey, RJ, if you invite me in next week, I promise I won't start any trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be there in case trouble comes up, but I promise I won't start it. I kind of feel like you guys buried the hatchet tonight, hopefully. So we'll have to worry about it. <laughs> well, I hope that hatchet is good and buried. <laughs> anyway, take it easy, guys. I just... I'm just here to try to help people help themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, a little bit of fireworks earlier, William. Yeah, I I, uh, I saw Jay posting everything in the thread. I'm like, well, William doesn't know what's happening here. <laughs> I think this is the calm portion of the program, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it comes out after that, but <laughs> the comments were just flying on the comment, like, what the hell is going on? But that was the point I was up. watching. I was debating whether to send you a message for a link or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched this for a little just while. I, 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 I had a couple people asking, are you going to stop it or not? Like, like I want to I want to stop, but I'm, it's like, if I let them get it out now, they'll finally get it out and be done with it, hopefully. So, a lot of this I'm pretty much oblivious to because I'm not very much into social media. I don't, yeah, I'm not on Facebook, I'm not on any chat. The hangouts are the exclusive thing that I do related to beer, right? So, you know, everything, and so I, you know, but when I started getting into social just a little bit, I was really quite surprised to see the, see the amount of, I guess, animosity I or the schism between, you know, some beer groups. You know, I thought yeah. beer was something everybody pretty much could come to an, you know, agreement upon. But like with anything else, there's going to be divisions and such. And I just try to steer clear of that myself. Yeah, and that's why I had like the hater drama portion of the title there because some of the stuff happens with some of the groups. Not even just with those two going at it, but just other people in general. Like there's people in some groups that if they question anything, they're getting kicked out of groups on Facebook. And it's like, really just cause someone questions something about your idea of the beer or why you're thinking in a certain way. Well, I'm, I'm a little older. I grew up in an era that I never heard the word hater until yeah. there was social media. Yeah. Now any, anything in a negative tone is all automatically is called hater. Not ne- yeah. I mean, that's not true. People, they blow things out of proportion. Small risks become big deals because you know people's ego gets bruised. You know, I, I, I think it's, I think it's, it's just, off the track quite a bit of what it should uh, be. Of course, we weren't trophy babies, so everybody didn't win either. So that's absolutely <laughs> like you know, you challenge, you work for what you wanted to gain. It wasn't like whatever you said is just automatically the truth. If you lost, you went back and tried to get better. Right. <laughs> yeah, not everybody got a trophy. You're looking for the reason. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a, that's a bygone era, apparently. But uh, Yeah, yeah. And we're, yeah. we're seeing some of the repercussions in society because of that, too. That day. People expect a certain things just because, you know, hey, I got to work. You should just give me this. Like, no, you're supposed to get to work. <laughs> and, you know, the, 
just the lack of perspective in everyday life. Someone would call 9-11 because someone left the pickles off their McDonald's, I mean, their Burger King Whopper. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just a <laughs> lack of, rea- of a sense of reality nowadays. Yeah. It happens a lot of times, you know, you can just everyday mean the, the way things are blown out of proportion. So, uh, yeah. And I don't see it reversing because nowadays with social media, many people are into themselves. I mean, by the, by definition, it's healthy is about me. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, like I said, being a little older, I just, older, I just, just can't associate with that. Well, they did some report. They said most people can't stay off of like Facebook for like three days or something, something because they're used to having their, they get a rush when people comment and like their stuff. They kind of got into that situation now where they Power of Facebook. feel a benefit of it. Yeah, I see someone waking up in the middle of the night. They have to check their smartphone to see if they got any likes between the time they went to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> get three more. And they get upset if they don't get the likes on stuff. Like, why do they like the post or why do they do this or do that? It's, it's, uh, I think if people would just, you know, self reflection sometimes can be very, you know, just take a look in the mirror occasionally and just see where your life is going, you know, what your priorities are, things like that. But uh, it seems yeah. like it's just uh, what's that microwave society? Everybody wants a pat on the back or wants uh, acknowledgement of something. Paddle, we're doing yeah, Paddle Brian. Yeah, Paddle yeah. Brian said that, you know, when he was battling his, uh, his sobriety, the uh, former sports talk show host and, and sports guy, CBS and all these other networks. Uh, he said, you know, we all want to be accepted and liked by strangers from time to time. And, you know, and realizing we feed off it and like, you know, and at times, sadly, I've been guilty of it myself. You know, I post a picture and, you know, whatever, uh, you know, where, whether I'm at or beer whatever and you know i posted whatever and i just want to see okay or okay how many responses did i get you know i shouldn't care i should not care but you know we all have that sort of that that looking for that okay gratification i guess i don't know that's like, that's i think everybody's gonna get that at some point like my wife always says, like I go get my blood pressure yeah, test like that and everything. Like I'm never stressed. I'm like, I don't, I don't really care. I like, I don't really give it f. So it's kind of like, when you can live with that attitude, like you're not worried about what everybody else wants. Your stress levels down. It's a, yeah. 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 And what difference does that make? It right. Doesn't, it doesn't really. You know. It's like I don't try to go out to and say, hey, everybody's gonna like me or something like that. You know, you gotta live with how you want to live. You associate with people you associate with, and you move forward. Well, like John here was saying, uh, a lot of people have approval or acceptance or you know whatnot. Yeah, yeah, you see in a lot of aspects of stuff too, and part of it gets into, I guess, personality type stuff. We've done a lot of different personality type things when I've been in sales for as long as I've been in, and you know, I've never been kind of that follower type thing anyway. But a lot of people are just like. Well, what are you guys going to do? And it's like, well, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? And it's like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm going. I'm going to do this. And it's kind of like more people just like to follow and be part of that. It's whole okay. Group, like, yeah. It's okay to be awkward and yeah. be. I listened to Colin Cowherd today on his show. You know, it's okay. Years ago, we were, we would make fun of the nerd or the awkward kid. Now we want to we embrace him. The awkward, the nerd, the geek, or the you know the quirky guy. You know, because. They're the one who's creating the Snapchats of the world and the uh, Instagrams of the world, you know. Uh, he had some guy he was interviewing, I think that the founder of Deadspin, I believe. No, the big lead mm-hmm. on his show today. So, um, yeah. So, I just have your, your own uniqueness. And and I posted and said, hey, someone, someone told me I was weird. And I said, yeah. So, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm weird. And I know that, you know. <laughs> By I my see, music yeah, taste, yeah, by yeah, my I movie see, taste, yeah, and the yeah, beers yeah. I drink, yeah, I'm not the everyday typical black guy, you know, but that's okay, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or or not the everyday guy, you know, let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Fully correct, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I so, 
Yes. You know, be yourself and stop hating on other people and just get with you yeah, and again. I think the world will be a lot better. Exactly. Something sort of led to your beer news. I saw today that in Utah, they're lowering the uh, law for DUI to 0.05. Oh, they're lowering it. Wow. So don't drink and drive in Utah, the yeah. Mormon state. Well, in, in Utah, they um, – What's the ABV? I think some of their beers are like around 3.2%, I guess. I think I, I heard. Yeah, but you are really like low. Beers too, though, out there. They, they, make, they do have some lower ones, but maybe they make some higher ones for out of state or something. I don't know, but Utah is out there in Salt Lake City. The governor has signed the bill, but they said it would be under review because of quote unquote unintended consequences. So they're already getting some blowback from people. So yeah, like when the, the governor wants to drink something. <laughs> yeah. 0.5 is a pretty low threshold. Oh yeah, a little bit. You can't have five beers. Yeah. <laughs> no. If you got multiple wives, you're gonna need multiple beers. <laughs> Don't drink too many malt liquors. <laughs> Which would be more of the reason to drink, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you might need a natty daddy there. <laughs> that might be some of those unintended consequences. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I thought that was, you know. Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't see that out there. That's interesting. It was on the. Uh, I get a uh, an email from Beer Advocate. They have like the weekly stories. And another one is that that Paps has resumed production beer production in Milwaukee. They have a micro pub and a restaurant. Right. right in the section near the section war for many years, you know, they brewed beers. So I think the trend is going to be for these big companies or ones like Paps is to get your foot back into the brewing to get to establish roots with your local community like Milwaukee, where you have such a deep history and then still let your big workhorse beers be brewed by the subcontractor like by Miller, etc. Right. I think Narragansett has done much the same thing and Stroh's is being uh, made again in, in Detroit. So uh, I think that's pretty much the business model for some of these companies to try to get, you know, reestablish their, reestablish their roots and their footing, for what they got their history from. And yeah, we've seen that, that, William, where yeah, a lot of these companies, you've seen that, William, where a lot of these guys are kind of bringing back, hey, with Strolls, you know, and all these other beers, you know, Old Taker Ale is being brewed, you know, and I don't know if the story is true, they're going to discontinue that beer. I hope they don't, because I think that's a very excellent beer, uh, in my opinion. And, I uh, think they're going to pull back a while. Okay. It's been pulled here. I never got a chance to try it. Okay. Yeah, I had to get it. I had to drive about, what, 40, 50 miles to get it in Mississippi, and you know, looking back on, I think it was worth the worth the worth the drive. You know, plus it was a major thunderstorm going through from Alabama to Mississippi. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those thunderstorms are no joke down there. No, they're not. And when you can't see, and the rain's coming down, and you're in a bridge where you don't see anything, but you just see a lot of water, and all of a sudden you say, oh, "Wait a minute, okay, I see some hazard lights. Okay, let me turn my hazard lights on." You know, that, that how bad the visibility is. And, you know, it's like, okay, you know, let's, let me slow it down. And uh, driving I-10 westbound, you know, <laughs> and trying to get my stuff. So, I, okay. But um, um, but you're right. Everything you're saying, William, I completely uh, uh, agree with you. Are you able to get hams in Alabama? Get what? Hams in Alabama. Yes, I do. We got it about, say, uh, about March, about late February, March, we got hams. Yeah. And I, I did, I did a review of it and I thought it was, uh, you know, it was, I was happy and, and again, give credit to Miller to really, you know, again, really promoting and pushing their, their brands, even some of these old school brands out there. And, and, uh, I mean, I don't know if y'all, I know a lot of you don't drink high life, but if you do, you know, you'll see the price of highlight has gone up to probably like maybe three dollars, two dollars, or three dollars more than it was before, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and you see the marketing campaign that Miller has really pushed out there. I mean, you know, from you know, on YouTube and um, other other websites, and even even on television. 
you know, really saying, hey, we're going to really promote the high life now. And, you know, and um, and the prices have gone up, you know, where years ago it was, you know, the easiest, cheapest, you know, budget beer you can get, you know, so. They may be trying to separate the Miller High Life from their budget brand. Right. Like hams it out. It's dirt cheap, the hams is. Yeah. And uh, put the High Life on the same level as Miller Light, I guess, right? And you got your other budget, you got the Miller Milwaukee's Best Lager, which is the budget brand. You may want to separate that a little bit from Miller High Life and then actually, a bit, you know, cannibalizing some sales. Right. So you want to sort of separate those two as a as a separate identity. But I right. noticed that once once uh, Molson Coors took over Miller and absorbed them, <laughs> that they've taken an extra interest in some of these old legacy brands. They updated the Hams website. You can now buy. Uh, they have a shop you can buy stuff on, about Ham. They put a beer locator on there, and so the distribution of it has been widely increased here lately. And it, it showed up here in North Carolina about a month ago. I was I made a big deal because I had some which I got in uh, West Virginia. I got a twenty four pack for nine ninety nine. Wow! And then a couple weeks later, I noticed it's in Food Line here in where I live. So they've definitely increased the distribution, and and it seems like it's creating a little bit of a buzz. You know, I've heard some people talk about hams. You know, maybe they remember the old the old commercials on TV with the bear. You know, whatever reason, maybe their granddad drank it or whatever. So I'm glad to see that, you know, these beers are still surviving, you know, in this beer atmosphere, which is very splintered and fragmented nowadays. Fragmented and also at times can be, you know, very mean spirited, you know, or, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> that can happen. Yeah, I almost bought a High Life the other night just for shits and giggles because it was, I think it was like two tall boys for like a two dollars or something. Buy two, get ten free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was the, the keyword there? Was almost right. <laughs> but I did that malt liquor Monday with Eric on Monday. That was pretty funny. Oh, I didn't get a chance to watch. I didn't get a chance to see it. Yeah. It was all right. We did a – what did we do? Natty Daddy, I think? Yeah, I, think I can't get that. We had the 6% here in Mobile, and it, it just – only had was a 24-pack, and it just didn't sell well. I think that was the problem. You know, why would I buy a 24-pack of this, sell it in a 25-ounce uh, uh, sell it in a 25 ounce can or a 6-ounce can or a 4-pack of this, you know? Why should I – buy a big case of this beer that I'm probably ain't going to drink all of it. I, I, and I agree. Cause I gave some of those cans away to some of my coworkers. I said, man, I ain't drinking all this shit, man. This is, it's too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one we get here is 8% on that one. Yeah. But we get like the 24 <laughs> ounce or 25 ounce can, whatever it is. No. So. Yeah. I think you get those here. You can get them like two for our 75 or something like that. Yeah, it was like Kroger had them on sale when I got one. I was like, hell, I'll do it with Derek. I don't care. I'll do one. He said he wasn't doing one. It's coming, I mind you. I said, good. My liver can recover. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. I think they are like an odd ounce can. It's not like a normal, yeah. you know, 24. It is something weird, like 26 ounce can or something like that. Have you guys had that Day Blazer yet from New Belgium? Yeah, I did. And I did a review of it. I thought, thought it was pretty good. Two fifty for a twenty five ounce can. Seemed like a fair I guess is a fair price here where I yeah. live at. But you know. Well, for but that, that was pretty good. Twenty five ounce can, excuse me. Yeah. I thought it was pretty smooth. It's definitely an easy going ale. So <laughs> as it says when it can, I mean it's pretty smooth. That's from New Belgium. Yeah, it's one they just came out with. They sell it in the uh, the big cans, or they sell it in the six packs or twelve packs, I believe. Huh. I haven't seen that one. I don't think. Of course, I haven't looked for it either. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did a review on it. I thought it was pretty good. But yeah. 
much is the hams uh, for a case in, in your area? 24 pack of hams goes for about 13 52 uh, a 24 pack. So um, some places is uh, more, maybe a dollar more, you know, but I think it's reasonable. And Milwaukee, as far as Milwaukee's best light and their um, – and their lager, and I think it goes about maybe 14, 14, 14 bucks. So, you know, um, um, it, it's like I said, the hams is, is, is a decent beer. I, I don't see anything, no fault with it at all. And it has some similarities to Milwaukee's best lager since they updated their, increased their uh, ABV on that one from 4.3 to 4.8. There's some similarities between that and hams, but, um, I think Hams has a little more of a somewhat of a grassy note to their beer. That's what I was uh, thinking. You know, kind of stands out more. Almost like a little lemon. Yes, grass. exactly. Exactly. To me, and it's it, very it, crisp and refreshing for a summer day. You know, like fishing at the lake. Hamswood, I think, would be a pretty good choice, especially at that price point. Uh, fishing at the lake, or sitting in your backyard and just just, just hanging out and just bullshitting. Yeah, uh, you know nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. Do you get um, the the ham special light too, or just the regular? Just the regular hams. I haven't gotten a special light. Hopefully, that will come. Um, I'm headed to Memphis uh, on around June, uh, the first week of June. I'm heading up there with my lady. We're uh, going to do some stuff up there, and uh, and uh, I'm probably going to try to sneak away and do some shopping. <laughs> so you'll be you'll be walking in Memphis. You know, walking in Memphis. Walking in Memphis. WC Handy and yes, going down Union <laughs> Avenue. Yes, sir. So yeah, but um and uh who knows? I may drive over since Arkansas is like a stone throws away across the Mississippi River. Have you ever so. seen a bag? Seen what? The beer stag. No, I, I've I've not in my area. I know of that beer, but haven't seen it. No. I was thinking. It I'm sure. Beer. I'm sure it'll be if, if I go in that. If I'm in traveling and I'm down in, Mem in Memphis and definitely go around Arkansas. I'm sure I can have it since, since I know it's popular in the Midwest and Arkansas ain't far from Missouri and you know. Yeah, so. that's what I thought. I heard you mention Arkansas. I think that's the area, the Missouri, Arkansas area is where it's mostly sold. I probably could email Paps and they would probably tell me where it's available at. Yeah. But that's one of the legacy beers I've never tried. Right. I saw these uh, ham special light in Pennsylvania. Okay. It was sold alongside, and I saw uh, Stroh's light. I saw many of the light beer versions. I saw, uh, I saw Red Dog. I haven't seen Red Dog in a while. I, I can't. I mean, Red Dog. I mean, I, I remember that when in, when I was in Jersey. You know, that was a popular beer, and that was one of the sponsors for one of the uh, uh, soccer teams uh, when the MLS had started uh, early in, in season, going back what ninety five, ninety six, whenever the the the, the, the league had started. Uh, at Red Dog, the New Jersey Red Dogs. No, no, yes, that's what it was. The New Jersey Red Dogs. That was the. Um, Indoor arena, arena football league, I think it was New Jersey Red Dogs, whatever it was. But yeah, Red Dog Beer was their spot major sponsor, obviously, because of their name, you know. Um, but um, yeah, that was a very popular beer at that time, and I wasn't drinking Red Dog much. I was, you know, drinking, you know, Meister Brow when it was still around, and you know, yeah. MGD. <laughs> You know, and, you know, Ballantine Ale, you know, up there, you know. Ballantine, I didn't know. I thought Ballantine was just a regular straight-up beer until, again, Beer 101, you know, just a 20-year-old kid trying to say, hey, let's get, some, let's get some beer, and you know. And at that time, now, back then, I looked like I was in my <laughs> legal age. I had a little facial hair. Yeah, give it to me. They weren't carding me at that time. You know, those – no disrespect, but the Orientals in China say, okay, whatever. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Come buy beer. Come buy beer. Yes. <laughs> I saw a 30-pack of the Red Dog for about $19. Uh, 
30. And they also had the Coors Extra Gold Lager, which I'd never seen anywhere else. Yeah. You know, yeah. Pennsylvania, you know, basically you buy it from a warehouse. You know, where you go in and they have the huge, you know, where they are, although in, they are now selling six packs and singles. But for many years in Pennsylvania, you had to buy basically like bulk beer. Large I remember pack. a 30 pack being pretty common. Yeah. And when I went in, that was a huge, you, you just, they have a drive through the one I went to, or you just walk into the building and you're right. just facing just stacks and stacks of walls of beer. You know, and uh, so it's, uh, that's, but the selection was huge. I saw many beers I'd never seen in the area where I live. So. Yeah. Anybody else got anything else to say on beer? Before I drink it yet. We can still keep drink drinking, but I'll take the other people out of their misery. <laughs> drink it is good for you. That's all. The article oh, I saw. By the way, also, if, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Finish up. Finish I also have a story about the, the New England IPAs, which are gaining in popularity. Oh, they've been gaining, yeah. You know, they that's going to be, be the flavor of the year, it seems. The discussion is whether that was sours. a category or, a, or was within the IPA. And they said it, it established enough of its own identity that it was now considered a separate style. Yeah. And they Harpen. were talking about, you know, the... Harpin, Harpoon, Harpin IPA. I know that's been around forever, um, but, you know, I really enjoy their IPA a lot. I don't think I've had theirs in a while. I've had it before, though. So, oh, yeah, I've had it for a long time. Yeah. Well, you see, oh, yeah. Sam Adams have one. He's like, okay, it's jumped the shark now. <laughs> right. <laughs> they have a New England IPA. Okay, or is this over? I love the Rebel. I love yeah. Sam's Rebel. The Rebel line is excellent. Well, I think like, I had the Rebel juice, which actually wasn't too bad. First time I had, it, I didn't like it as much, but I had it. At a beer fest, when I had it in the bottle later on, I actually didn't like it. But yeah. you thought when you saw the label, it was going to be a New England IPA, and it wasn't that case. It was just one they used juice in. Mm. I was like, you know, you guys are up in Boston. If you're going to say juiced, you're kind of in that area where you expect a juicy IPA. It's almost like a false marketing. Maybe I could sue them like that guy that sued Walmart. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, has that thing been thrown thrown out of court? Because I think it was a bullshit lawsuit. I don't think it is. I think it's just kind of out there still. I don't think he's went to court yet. I think it's just all been filed previously. Mm. No, I occasionally look to see. There's been no decision or anything, so I think the court date hasn't happened. Yeah, that thing will last forever until everybody forgets about it. Yeah. <laughs> Many times with those, there's a, there a big rush when the it's a, the allegation is made in the settlement gets sort of buried. It's the immediacy of the charge that everybody focuses on. Or many of these are dismissed or never even reach reach trial. Yeah, most most cases they don't reach trial. Yeah, I bet they could probably say, "Well, we'll give you cats I IPA for the rest of your life." They'll be like, "Okay, never mind, then I won't sue." Like you hated the beer, but you'll take it for life, won't you? <laughs> and even though they, you know, many times it's dismissed. The goal is many times is to sort yeah. of bloody the name of the company it gets out there you know these yeah. class action shoots i think most of them know deep down that it's not going to be successful yeah. but they're trying to strike a blow against x number x company and this does it from a pr standpoint or at least we pick up a chain they, <laughs> they take a public relations hit by yeah. having to in this in the first place because many of these really don't have any there's no legal definition for what is a craft beer well, just well, people are accepting the Brewers Association now. That's a definition of what qualifies as a craft brewery, not the quality of the beer itself. No, no, just what makes it a craft yeah, beer. That's what I'm saying. That that's yeah. a distinction between that and what the law sees legally as what is a craft beer. It's like, how do you define what is homemade or old fashioned? Yeah, but even in the Walmart case, they're looking at how the Brewers Association defined a craft beer. So what is the true definition of that? Um, you can't be owned more than 25% by one of the major companies. What? I look um, at Sam Adams as not a craft beer. I think they're up mm -mm. there. As they're still, they're still, they're, they're the same company. They're not owned by one of the major ones like Budweiser, 
AB know, a bad or SAP a good or no, that's exactly where you I was can going grow as a company to be big, but you can't be one of the major ones having the ownership. And you but, but to me though, uh, to me though, made on a small scale. Like like I think where John is trying to say is like um, um Well even on a scale like those guys are so are so big that they distribute so far, but is that still Well great you can't area? make more than six billion you can't exactly. make more than six million barrels and Sam Adams supposedly is still under that number. They changed that from two million. five million. Yeah, six they changed it from two million to six million years That's ago to keep Sam Adams part of it. It also kept meaning a part of it. Yeah. yeah. I think Sam Adams does just enough stuff differently that they're most people still view him as a craft beer, but I don't really. I, I would almost see him as a borderline micro macro type. Yeah, I can say that. I can, I can say that probably more close to that borderline, but I would still say they're by all definition, if they're under that six million, they're still craft beer. Yeah, by letter of the guideline, Man, that's they're a, under the. That's a ton of beer. Yeah, but I think the perception of many drinkers is they're not craft. Yeah. Despite you know technically they may be, but some people so would when is, so is, and they would say, "Well, Kona's craft beer and actually it's not because of their ownership. Their ownership. Even, though Even though how they make their recipe, recipe and they craft that beer out, beer you would think it tastes just like a craft like beer. beer." So are these guys like Bell's and then um, getting bought up? Or are they not? The other are part they is they have to use actual ingredients or natural like adjuncts, or whatever. Do which in craft beer. It changes anyway because there's so many different things people put in there as an adjunct or to build it up that aren't traditional, but yet they get through because it's craft beer. The word is like nobody really looks at that one as deeply as they look at the ownership and they look at the barrel production. Yeah, I've drank a blonde ales by craft brewers and they have grits in there, which is just corn, which is just another form like the macros use in their AAL adjunct yeah. lagers. But, but some people do it differently because maybe it's a little more expensive. It's from a smaller brewery, et cetera. Yeah. So, Rod, these guys that are getting bought up by like Anheuser and whatnot, like Ballast Point and all those guys, are those still considered craft beers? Uh, no. no. Technically, they're not. Um, so, like, Constellation Brands is, they got, I think they were AB and Bev, but like just recently, Founders was from the Modelo Group or whatever out of Mexico or Spain or wherever, so they're not technically considered a craft beer now. Um, which is weird because, like, nobody's bitching about Founders as much as they're bitching about Wicked Weed, which is hilarious. Um, but but if, like they leave those guys alone, if they leave those guys alone as their own separate entity, though... It doesn't matter because it goes, under, it goes under the ownership dollars is what people look at, and the whole idea with a craft brewery is that you're putting money into that local community or whatever, and if you have a big brother over upside. you, the, the funds are now going uphill to a conglomerate or whatever. Right, so right. I understand that, but I mean, but I mean, like from a from a definition standpoint, but then in the, in the people's eyes, though, would you still consider those guys craft beers if they're not changing anything? Say they're not changing anything; they're still donating. Right. All right, but because by standards. They're they're being the looked person, down upon. Yeah, because... they say they're still craft beer. I mean, you know, I drank a Ballast Point. It tastes like a craft beer. It's just a definition that defines them not being in that arena now. But same with good people. If, if you came up from another country or something, you picked it up and you were like, you would think it was just a craft beer, just fine. So that's when it gets so, into the so whole I, thing so... of nitpicking. So the next thing is, is if they're not considered craft beers, then well, they should lower their damn prices then. <laughs> well, some of them will because of their buyouts. I mean, you look at a Goose Island, you buy them now, like around here, we get them for eight ninety nine or sometimes seven ninety nine a six pack, which is pretty cheap for the beers they're putting out. Lagunitas is usually at a pretty good price point. Um, they are. The Bell's Point, I think, has always been kind of ridiculously high. Yeah, be a craft I mean, they're good. I'll be a craft beer now. You're definitely overcharging for it. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, are they ever gonna? Will they drop their price now? Yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting to see. They haven't done it as of yet. I mean, it's almost like a whole thing, like with the uh, the beers that we see that are like supposedly imports, but then if we look on the can and it's like brewed in New York or somewhere, and it's like, why are we paying import prices when these beers are brewed here? <laughs> they will drop. And that's the price. where I was like Sam Adams. That's where Sam Adams to me kind of seems like a gray area. Yeah. Because they're so big, and I guess you could even put like um, 
Don Dark 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 Sierra Nevada and um, uh, no, what you call it out there in California also makes, a, makes all those IPAs drink before or drink uh, uh, New Belgium. Yeah, that's why I try to think Sierra Nevada, I don't know how many barrels they put out a year, but they're pretty much like out there. You would think it's a good amount they're putting out there, but I don't know how much they actually – Seller. But sure about it, and there's another one, guys. A uh, beer that anyone can get. Right, anyone here in the in the U.S. can get Sierra Nevada. I mean, where you can you can get it, and William, you can, I'm sure you can get it. Sure. I get it here. All their brands, from the pale ale, their signature to the torpedo, to the celebration ale. You know, right. Um, you know, I, I, I just you know. Million. But if they're under that six million barrels, they're still right. I mean, but keep in mind, that's a lot. It, was, it was only like however many years ago. Maybe, that that's kind of how I look at it. I look it at it. It used to be two million barrels, and then they changed it to that six million. So it used to be a lot more of a smaller group. So the whole thing is arbitrary when you think about it. They're just making up what they want to go along with. Well, like I said, that's how kind of how I look at it. Look at it. If you can reach an area, part of the country that's not, you know, your home area or your home base, let's just say, Sierra Nevada. Up and down the, the Pacific, up and down, you know, off the Pacific Ocean, Oregon, Washington State, you know, Nevada, and then you could maybe go further into Texas. And if you go further out, and that's how I look at Sam Adams, I feel okay, you're not a craft beer company because a craft beer, mostly, like I said, they'll deal with their certain region, they'll deal with their certain, that's kind of how I'm looking at it, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, it gets it, but that gets yeah. into also because we have that three tier distribution system here. If you right. get the right distribution channel to spread you out, but most of the time it's in your area. Like you can't get a trillium unless you're like in that trillium area for the most part, or something from the Alchemist. You have to be in that area. Um, but then there's other ones that have that distribution. Like you know, uh, we were talking earlier about like Left Hand. You know, there's spots they can get to around sixty or seventy percent of the country, but they still don't make enough production to really put them up that top level. Yeah, six million barrels seems like a ton. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, like Yinglings, they they distribute to probably fourteen, fifteen states on the east coast, and they're still under that six million barrel. Right, they're still considered a craft brewery, right? And their top seller, the traditional lager, is is the twelfth best selling beer in this country. Yeah. It's a seller. Accounts for about seventy percent of their total sales. It's so not even the best beer they actually make either. <laughs> I think the Lord Chesterfield, which I never, you know, I've heard some very good stuff about it. But uh, as far as the pricing goes, they will price it according to what they think people will pay for it. Yeah. In their best interest. As long as the perception of it is it's a craft beer and people are willing to pay a few more bucks extra for six pack, it's not going to come down. Yeah. It will only come down when they do plan to And that's why it's like Ballas Point. People are under some type of perception of this beer and I've had some of them there and they got some pretty good beers, but some haven't been all that great Yeah, for them to demand a price. But a lot of that goes, yeah, I think a lot of that goes back to where their name was so big, where it was hard to get. And And people are that perception because yeah. I was just interested to see what everybody else's thoughts were. Not to say that any of those guys are making bad beers, but where do you cut the, you know, make a cut off the Sam Adams. You know, I enjoy a lot of the Sam Adams. Yeah, you would think the next thing would be the prices coming down on some of their stuff. Um, that's that's kind of my point too. Is like Ballast Point, especially. I mean, you can buy, you know, six pack of anything of theirs is thirteen ninety nine, fourteen ninety nine, fifteen ninety nine around around here. Yeah. Every time you pull out your wallet and buy a beer, you're voting with your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Lagonitis. You know, you can buy Lagonitis for. A tenth of the price. That, that's what I'm saying. That you can yeah. make a pretty good argument that it might not be. It might be eighty percent as good and fifty percent less price. Yeah. Many people there. You know, everything's a compromise in life. You know, according to what your budget will will yeah. allow. So every time you vote on a beer, you know, it's like, well, it's a good beer, but is it good at fourteen bucks for a six pack? When I can get something else, I like just almost as much for maybe nine or ten dollars. Yeah. And I, you know, and I consider that because most people, money is a factor. Oh, for a lot of people, especially nowadays, a lot of people is a factor. So that and comes into play. I think, I think the mystique. 
I think the mystique factor plays a lot in that too, though, with these wet, with these um, beer advocates and and people that rate these beers so high. You know, seeks out the yeah, How many people well, rate the beers high because they see other people rating them high? Well, no, you're right. You know, yeah. you're right. You're right. Yeah. Like Hetty like Topper. Like Hedy I mean, I've had it. I mean, Topper is really good, but is it? For six hours or twenty four hours, they get it good though. Yeah, I mean, I can tell. You know I mean? I've I've had zombie dust, and that's been one of the better pale ales I've ever had. But I'm not saying the line to wait for it. Oh you know, yeah, zombie dust is good. But but that that's one of those kind of mystique type beers too, though. Yeah, so I, I would think. And you can never discount I, the I power of advertising. Oh no, not at all. What's that influence that people put on other people? The fact that one out of every comedian now, one out of every five beers sold is a Bud Light. Just yeah. think about that for a second. What if every fifth car you saw on the road was a Ford Focus? That's twenty percent market share by one product. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so you know, you have to keep it in that perspective. Same way, in, in like in the, in the in the whiskey industry, the power of names like Jack Daniels and Jim Beam. It sells a lot of product, just the name itself. Oh, yeah. But it's not really apples to apples, though. Well, that's why you have the trademark on the stuff. Yeah, the name alone will bring people in. I mean, that's something that you see in every facet of life, not just with alcohol. Like, if you go to a, a movie, you'll see someone slap a name on there, and it'll be like, you know quentin tarantino production or something like that quentin tarantino didn't do anything with the movie at all except say hey that's damn, use my name or something and then if people go see this movie sucks it's like well quentin tarantino didn't really correct it you know he just used his name <laughs> you know it's like that right. power that you have with your advertising you can just slap it on stuff and that draws people in on a lot of things and how about the beats headphones they came out of nowhere yeah to dominate the market 50 to 60 percent market share because they got dr dre they mm -hmm. got some, you know, and athletes were wearing them, not as headphones, they were fashion accessories. Yeah. And before you know it, they went from overnight from nothing to dominating. The young kid goes into Best Buy, he don't want a pair of headphones, he wants a pair of Beats. Yeah. Where, you know, the, the product became synonymous with the, the name itself. Yeah. Like Beats or uh, Kleenex. They don't want tissues, they want Kleenex. Yeah. Well, that's, the like, I'm one of the same. that's kind of some of the subliminal stuff. Like when I was in college and studied advertising, we used to talk about how they used to splice the old movie reels and the movie theater, and it would insert like little Coke footage um, in between. And subconsciously, people wouldn't know, but they were getting Coke flashed in front of them. Product subliminal messaging. Right. And then people would go to the theater. They would ask for a soda or a pop. They'd always ask for a Coke. It was a woman being placed in front of them. They didn't even realize it. Yeah. Like, like the family family shopping like at Aldi, you know, where they have a lot of private brands. Mm -hmm. They'll go by the snack aisle and the kid will say, are we getting Cheetos? When actually it's like, actually it's like puffs. Right. <laughs> is it, Mom, there ain't no Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> the name has become so popular that the product and the name are inseparable. Yeah. You no, know, it's a lot. And uh, when, you, when you've reached that level of success, I mean, that's, that's what everybody vies for. Yeah. They know your product. Well, in your, sta in your state, and I've always been told, and I've actually seen it a couple times when I was down there, when people go get a drink, they don't like say soda either. They say Pepsi. Yeah, and they'd be like, well, "Let me get an here's, orange. Let me get an orange Pepsi." Or let me. It's like here's, here's, Pepsi here's, was so, made in North Carolina, and people are uh, used to was, the whole Pepsi thing everywhere. It was invented by a, ph a pharmacist in Newburgh, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, I was actually there before. It's like it was actually the pharmacist's assistant. He was like a seventeen-year-old or eighteen-year-old kid that came up with it, messing around. And we have the the uh, regional drinks like Cheerwine, mm -hmm. uh, Sun Drop. Which have large problems in the area. Yeah. How, um, William? How far is New Bern from uh, uh, Nags Head? I know. I, I, I when I lived in Norfolk and um, back in two thousand and one, in two thousand and five. You know, Norfolk went to Chesapeake, Hampton Roads. 
you know, um, you're talking about the you know, my, uh, Portsmouth, all these other areas, New Bern, North Carolina. It was one of the cool things about living down there, going to the Carolinas, you know, between going to Raleigh, I mean, just the area was just, just, it was just a good vibe. I mean, how far New Bern is, um, say, Nags Head or maybe, uh, um, what is it, Eliz Eliz Elizabeth C. You know. Elizabeth City is much more close. Uh, Newburn is inland. I don't know exactly how many miles, yeah. but it's uh, you know. So it's closer to the Norfolk area, right? Norfolk, Hampton Roads area. Uh, that's a little bit to the north, yeah. But North Carolina, like you said, Raleigh is sort of the dividing point between the east and west. Okay. And, you know, our state is wide, but it's it's short, so that, that can be it's pretty good distance between Raleigh and like you have Goldsboro, yeah, Goldsboro. Newburn. Elizabeth City, a lot of in the eastern part of the state. I always told my folks back home that to me, the South doesn't start in Virginia. To me, the South really officially starts in North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> the more you're in the South. So. <laughs> it's a, but it's a rapidly changing state because of the the regional triad park area of, of uh, Raleigh, Durham, a lot of high tech, high tech. biochemistry, yeah. medical field. Yeah. Uh, Technology, a lot of implants from other parts of the country are moving here. So it's uh, becoming a much more diverse state. And a good college basketball area. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I would and also color guard. That's another thing that's very popular. They like auto racing, college basketball, and color guard because you look at all the high schools. Yeah. And yeah. a friend of mine was involved in color guard. And I would go to some of their competitions at some of their, at some of the high schools and some of the, the colleges and, even some of the, you know, smaller schools, whether it be historical black colleges or whatever it was, universities or whatever, um, they would do color guards. And then they were like pretty, pretty, pretty good crowds coming out. And it was very entertaining, you know. So we had the two schools eight miles apart, University of North Carolina and just a few Duke miles away. And from NC State, right. And all three of those have won national championships in basketball since the 80s. Yeah. I mean, that's you right. Add them all together, we've had about eleven national championships here since uh, yeah. since the run that North Carolina State made in nineteen eighty three. To that, if I had to move back, yeah, if I had to move back up north at any place, you know, other than New Jersey, it would be North Carolina. I would move to. It's uh, it's, you know, we have access to the mountains in the west, the yeah. coastline, the beach, all within a day's drive. I mean, you can take a nice trip. You know, just. At the variety. Next is a beautiful beach community. Well, I may get to come see you at some point, William. You know, my uh, my mom is probably going to look to retire in Charlotte next year. So, my cousin just moved uh, back home from Charlotte. Yeah. Within the last year. I'm only about seventy miles from Charlotte. Down I-85. Yeah, for the same reason William just said. The mountains or the beach or wherever the hell you want to be at. Yeah. yeah that's kind of why I grew up in Jersey. I was right outside Philly, but I could be in New York or Baltimore or Maryland. I mean, well, Baltimore's in Maryland or um, Atlantic City, anywhere within a couple of hours. It's a lot of stuff on the East Coast you can do. But yeah, but uh, well, I guess I'll go ahead and wrap it up because we've been on there for a yeah. little bit. Let me go ahead and get up out of here because I gotta get up around seven thirty in the morning. So my time. Yeah. So jumping up. Seven thirty. That's that's late. Yeah. <laughs> you, well, you know, I, you I know, gotta, gotta be at work at seven thirty. You know, Jake I'll tell you that. Yeah, I gotta be working at seven thirty. So. Woo! Well, that's early. Oh <laughs> well, yeah. So uh, we got a long day ahead of us. A couple of events that we're doing this weekend that we're setting up for and. Uh, and I'm um, trying to get as much sleep as I possibly can because yeah. very important, believe me. Outside of sex, sleep is really key. <laughs> <laughs> but the good thing is my, my office is in my house. So I only got to walk 30 feet. You go. Love it. <laughs> Love it. You need to get put clothes on if you don't want, do you? Yeah. <laughs> my longest run is if I decide to go to get something from Starbucks before I start working. <laughs> Hey, hey, McDonald's coffee is just as good as, as Starbucks. My That's opinion. better. It's cheaper. <laughs> yes. And they got any size, $1. So there I think you I got to buy one, get one free, too. I can go get a couple of griddles in the morning. 
Yep. Ended to burn the shit out of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the Sue McDonald's. <laughs> All right. Todd, William, Rod J. has been a pleasure. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right. And with that being said, I'll go ahead and sign off here. We can still hang out if we want, but definitely appreciate everybody that joined in tonight. And, of course, watching. For anybody that's still out there watching, I don't know if you left, came back, you might have made a sandwich in between. Definitely <laughs> been on a little bit tonight, so definitely appreciate you. Oh, big shout-out also to Cold Brew Podcast. So Cold Brew tomorrow will actually be running – an interview with me on their podcast as they go through some of the beers. We had a talk last weekend, so they're putting some stuff together. So I'll get that link posted on the Facebook page for Rajay Beer Ventures, also the blog Rajay Beer Ventures. But there's some cool cats out of Arizona and California, and uh, looking forward to seeing how everything turned out there. But with that all being said, we don't have Eric tonight to do the PSA, but just don't drink and drive. You know, Be safe out there, and we look forward to catching you next week. Cheers.